Greetings and welcome everybody. My name is Kelly Robinson, Chairman of the Transportation Committee of the Bethesda County Board of Commissioners. Welcome to the Tuesday, August 21st, 2018 Transportation Committee meeting, uh, 2 p.m. We're just going to go around the room real quick. We have some special guests here. County Administrator, why don't you start with this introduction by for the record. Uh, Mark Teo, County Administrator. Uh, Douglas County Board of Commission Chairman, Dr. Ramona Jackson-Jones. I'm glad to be here today. Six, 30 minutes and then I'll head out to my next meeting. Well, welcome. Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, Rick Martin, Director of Communications and Community Relations for Douglas County. Mm -hmm. Miguel Valentin, Director of Transportation. Mike Mulcair, 3rd District Commissioner. Ron Roberts, Planning Zone Manager. Gary Watson, Multimodal Transportation Director. Jessica Theriot, Assistant to Mark Teal. Very good. Welcome everybody to this committee meeting. We've got not necessarily a full agenda, but we have a rich agenda and some things we want to cover. So we're going to go jump right into this. First order of business to talk about the approval of last meeting minutes, um, July 24, 2018. Has everybody had a chance? Miguel, did we get them out? Everybody had a chance to review them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I said that. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mark. Everybody's had a chance to review them. Did you saw? Did you see? He sent them. I didn't send them. Okay. But you created them. He said, okay, we're good then. I created them and sent them. Okay. Yeah, you did. You're a real-time guy. Um, that being said, um, if there's no additions, deletions, or edits to the meeting minutes, can I have a motion to approve the meeting minutes? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. All right. And again, let's have it recorded. We, though we have special guests, only um, the standing committee meetings can vote. Um, and ask for court records. That was high level. Did we get that yes, right? Sir. All right? Thank you. Now, the uh, minutes, you got the minutes with the sign. So we'll see what you're going to buy. Is that not mm -hmm. it? It's on all of them. Just pick one to sign. Okay. <clears throat> all right, so we'll, we're going to keep moving here. Uh, Miguel Valentin, director, let's go forward with our first agenda item, number one. Yes, sir. Uh, Commissioner, we have. Um, several items from the multimodal uh, division uh, and the first one is related to the transit services uh, with the uh, rolling out uh, the uh, fixed route bus service. Uh, we're going to need uh, some additional assistance to get that project underway and uh, our multimodal uh, uh, director is here to uh, give us some details related to some personnel changes that we need to request. Personal there. Right. So as we talk about this, we've had this, Commissioner Walker, remember we had this conversation about organizational structure, mm -hmm. right, when you came over almost a year. Are you a year yet? I am. You're a year yet. Welcome again for your anniversary. Um, and again, we're just setting context for the record that we've had conversations about organizational structure. Um, you know, I think you came in to inventory your current personnel, what was lacking, you had to get your mind around it. So, and again, this is just one piece of it. So it's not like we're picking this out of the air. This had, this was a broader conversation about mm -hmm. structure. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. All right, so keep on. Okay, well, I'll let uh, Gary Watson uh, go over the details related to that particular request. Okay. Well, as, as our co conversation has indicated, this is a position that has been discussed off and on for a year or so. And now that the decision has been made to move forward with the bus system, and we're also getting ready to, to negotiate with our third party provider, it's time to bring this individual um, on board with us. Uh, he will serve, he, she will serve as our main liaison with our third party operator, uh, making sure everything is running smoothly, assisting in uh, conflict resolution, problem solving. And even though we're several months away from actually having buses on the road, there's plenty for this individual to be doing um, in the meantime. He will be assisting us in, in help, helping us finalize the routes. He will be visiting locations where we'll, it will be some of our main stops, such as, as, as the mall, Walmart, and working on uh, a memorandums of understanding with them as to what we can and can't do. Uh, with our bus stops. He'll be working on policies and procedures, working closely with risk and safety and developing safety procedures, uh, also working <coughs> every day with a third-party provider 
on, on matters like that. He'll, he'll be setting things up like our, our daily fair collection policy, uh, our data collection policies and procedures. So um, as soon as they come on board, they're going to have full play of things to be doing to help us move forward. Right. I, I guess I have three questions, and Chris Walker, let's make sure we bring this out. So first, this is a budgeted item. Correct. How will it's we in the 2018 budget. Right. So we, we've already covered that part. Um, so it, it is a budgeted item. It is something we've been aware of. We've been pushing it off. We, we want to acknowledge you had brought it forward. We mm -hmm. said, well, first things first, let's get, get fun, the role of funding. My, my question is, so it sounds like this person is, um, he's in between you. If I look at multimodal, you have a broader scope of functions that you're responsible for. This person happens to be one. Correct. He is strictly dedicated to Connect Douglas, not the other modes of operation. He's not responsible for um, the voucher or any of that. He is solely dedicated to this one function. Is that so, true? Yes. That being said, so, so he's heads down. He is the key contact for our third party operator. That's who he'll face off with. Yes, I understand you're the direct. I, I, I get that. But he is solely responsible for that. Day to day, right? Uh, day to day operation. So he, he, he's in the bowels, make sure everything works according to the contract that, that is set forth and so on. My, my question is so he's also responsible for federal reporting. Now I'm going to come back. We, we talked about a function about federal reporting. Is he responsible for that part or no? Well, Again, that will be a joint effort. The, the third party provider will be actually collecting a lot of day to day data, such as, as passenger trips, mileage, things like that. But that information will be submitted uh, to our individual who, who will put the, that data into a proper form, and he will work closely with me in actually submitting the forms to the Federal Transit Administration. Right, so it won. He's just not a transmitter of information. He's validating. Yes. So that third party is providing something. There needs to be a validation process that we accept this because it's under his signature. Y'all signature that well, this is valid. That, that is absolutely that. right, Commissioner. The, the responsibility is ultimately uh, with us, with the county. Mm -hmm. and so uh, whatever information they gather, uh, we would have to review it, validate it before we submit it to the FTA for uh, future funding and uh, reporting, meeting the reporting question. All right, so here, here's my, and I got it. So here's the question, if, if Commissioner Walker, I'm going to give to you. Who, as we, let's say we begin today, we got through the first year to bring this online. And so here's this guy that's going to be ultimately responsible for ensuring that this comes online. Who's communicating this? Um, you know, Director Rick Martin, please listen to this. <clears throat> How does this, who's my project scheduler? Who's communicating? If he's the point of contact to the guy who's actually doing the actual work, who's my project manager that's communicating back up to us as the Board of Commissioners? Because this is something that, again, I'm going back to what we experienced getting to this place. Which there was just, we never had these major milestones. There was never, and maybe that's covered later in our communication, but I see communication separate from project management. Right? In other words, Who's hitting these milestones? Who's keeping up with our action items, our issues, our risks, right? Remember, I'm a certified project manager, so I'm like, okay, guys, we're not going out like that. Right? So who's that guy's going to face here? And, and Commissioner Miracle, you know that. You're rolling out new routes. You're rolling out some. There has to be, it, it can't just be we're working on it, we're checking boxes. There has to be a formal methodology to this. And I think this is a good way to prove that. Can y'all help me with that? I, I certainly can, and I'll let yeah. uh, Gary fill in the details. But essentially, uh, this individual, he or she, uh, when they come on board, would be have a responsibility for the transit services operation, and that individual will then funnel all information back up to Gary. Okay. So I envision that the face of communication between the operation and the board would remain uh, there. Okay. Now, having said that, there are a lot of steps that we have to go through between now and when we actually deploy. There's a lot of prep work. There's a lot of, uh, uh, in fact, some of the items on the agenda coming up relate to this very issue that there are a number of steps that we have to engage in before there's act any actual reporting coming back in terms of the specifics of the route. There's going to be 
the application process we're going to have to go through, and all of that is going to be still coordinated through Gary. At least that's my expectation. Yeah, no, and I get it. We're not taking, and Gary knows that we had this conversation. It's not to take over with Gary, but there's a skill set that I'm looking for, which is a formal project map. I, I, somebody with the skill set of project scaling that knows critical paths, that understands, okay, guys, who's going to tie all this together for us? And for Gary to speak to, and that's what I, I haven't heard. Who has that skill set? So there's a gap between this third-party operator and Gary. That, but I'm still looking for my schedule. I'm still looking for who's keeping up with these things in a formal sense. So we're we're being we were held to such a standard as we went through this process. <coughs> like, oh, okay. If that's the standard that we're held to, well, we can we will deliver to that standard. But that's what I'm saying. Okay, guys, who's going to do that? Gary, talk. Well, about I'll, I'll, again, I'll, this transit services manager. The, he, he would basically be the project manager overseeing the, the bus, bus service. He, he would do a lot of the data collection, information collection, uh, timelines, things like that, and, re and report that to me. And I, in turn, would be the one who reports back to the commissioners is, is, a, is the base of the program dealing with the, the media through Rick Martin, things like that. All right, I'm not going to labor that. I'm okay for right now. Commissioner Walker, please. Good, uh, robust, lucid discussion about this person's responsibilities. And is anything written down? We have a job description. Yes. And and as I recall, the job description needs some enhancement to to in, 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 uh, related to this to this conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been a while since I saw it, right. but we're talking about some responsibilities, some very specifics that I don't recall being in the job description. So. Uh, we need to review the job description, up, update it, uh, bring it before right. you, at least before the chair here, and see if the job right. description is, is right. uh, complete. And we, act, and we actually haven't taken it to personnel yet, so that that would be our next step, is, is to get with them and, and to revise the job description, zero down, down on some of those specifics like you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, today's specifics. Correct. And then we would bring it back, back before the... Uh, the board, or at least the chairman, yeah, for yeah. approval. So, and, and yeah, we won't believe it is we want to keep going on our agenda. But let's talk about, I'm sorry, you? No, that's, that's what I want to bring up. Okay. It's the timing. So here we are, it's August. So we say September for the sake of the conversation. It's back to Labor Day. Right? So all September, October, November, December. That's four full months, right? To complete. So, how long will this process last? Like, when did this? When do you anticipate this person being on board to really add value? If the, the broader suggestion was that we're going to go live in January or first quarter, well, obviously I would like for them to be here sooner rather than than later. But again, a lot of that depends on what kind of applications um, we receive. Uh, this do, this does require a certain skill set. And I hope it won't be, but it may be difficult to, to find a good match for what we're, what we're doing. And I, I think that's one reason why we need to, to go ahead and, and, and push this uh, job description through and, and get a recommendation before the board that be a, we, we'll be allowed to fill this position because it is going to take some time. And to that point, so it, it behooves you to work through Mark, you know, empower your staff to work together with you know, HR to get this before us. Because again, if we're going to approve a third party operator, they will be out to sea mm -hmm. two months before we even get this person on board, and you would think that they could be lockstep. So, just again, who's coordinating all these pieces? And again, uh, I think you got my point. So, I'm fine. So, you got the action item mm -hmm. to, to make sure we give it HR. And when do we think we can get this? You'll let us know. Mm -hmm. you said we'll give HR as soon as we revise the job description, we'll get everybody a copy of it. Right. right. And then we'll put it on the street. Okay. Right. So would would it be appropriate for a motion today to, to recommend to the full board of commissioners that we fill this position? We don't have it's, it's already in the budget, right? Yes. It's already approved. It's already approved okay. in the budget. Okay. But okay, Commissioner Walker, I want to make sure, but I want to see the job description first. Right. Yeah. I mean, so I mean, nothing goes forward until we see what we're, we're we, sending up. I understand. Yeah. We need to see the job description before it goes to personnel. Now, yeah. right? It could be the same day. Right. <laughs> right. 
get our comments in and take that to HR, and then y'all will shape it. But don't bring me something that I still got to go back and read, and my sure. stuff's not in there. Mm -hmm. I agree. Okay. You good? Yes, sir. Let's keep it moving. Okay. Next up. Second so item. no action. I mean, it's so it was an administrative action to keep moving with the process in relation administrative to concurrence. Administrative mm -hmm. concurrence. Mm -hmm. For you to move forward with the entire process, make sure we get a chance to see it before it goes to. Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right. You got that? that yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, second second item on the agenda is. Again, related to transit services, the, the uh, Connect Douglas uh, logo has been circulated, and again, this would be an, an item for discussion and or recommendation to go ahead and proceed with it as, as it is or make whatever changes would be necessary. And I, I, I believe this is similar, Gary, to the last version of the logo that was uh, looked at by the committee in terms of it was uh, it is. handed out mm -hmm. uh, along with others. Yeah. Yeah. And the the full board of commissioners back on April 18, 2000, 2017 actually approved the term Connect Douglas as the new name uh, for, our, for our service. What what we're asking for today is, is a recommendation to use this graphic in this color palette. Okay. Or okay. is it in my packet or yes. okay. yeah. yep. that's that's what we're asking for today, concurrence on the, the graphic and the, the color palette. Commissioner Bush, you had some <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I, yield. I don't want to. I don't want to uh, squelch discussion on this logo. But yeah. you, you get ten people in the room, and you get eight variations. So uh, yeah. uh, let, let's not uh, beat this beat to death. Uh, I only one thing I recognize is this, has done some graphics work. Is I'd like to see uh, the Douglas uh, uh, lettering in the, in the same point size and in, in same boldness. Uh, right now, it's small. That's one of thing. But that's the only suggestion I would make. So I have one question. So what the unveiling of the strategic what is that thing called? Yeah. Tomorrow night. Yeah. So instead of this on the left hand side, do we need to incorporate what's included in that logo? My opinion is this is our base design and you can based on this design you can modify it within the color palette and, and the uh, uh, fonts so, but you know maybe it's a block maybe there's some circumstances where you put this in the middle of it or you put it on the right side but what i'm saying if we adopt this as our, as our logo then it can be it can be modified as, as required commissioner mochair is totally on point with that wow thank you <laughs> so because it, it will fit on some things and some things that might you might need to go you might need to go work you know d-o-u-g-l-a-s like that with with, with the uh, logo at the top so i'm saying this is your core your core logo and just yes. use it any way you want yeah, to that point again we won't, well, I won't belabor it but uh it builds my thoughts with county administrator mentioned um miguel and Director Valentine and Director Watson, we were um, at the, um, in Atlanta at the ATL, you know I raised this question, which is the broader regional impact of ATL Link coming down. How would that impact us who have either already, like Cobb Link, 30 years of, of experience with their brand, um, as well as somebody with ours, which is emerging like an emerging brand equity. And I think uh, Chris Thomason's response was, well, you know, house of cars versus the brand of car. I mean, I, that wasn't his specialty, but it's something I'm concerned about. So think about it. You've got this brand. To Mark's point, you got the broader counties marketing brand, and you got this regional brand. And I'm sitting here like, okay, in some kind of way, this is going to be interesting. It's not to stop us, but it still, it begs and, and, and Commissioner Mulcair, maybe the point is, well, until that's all sorted out, we move forward with it is as is and not try to do too much at once. I mean, you almost got to take a stake in the ground. And But I'm open to this mm -hmm. conversation that says, okay, well, let's just move as is and as everything is sorted out, as we all get unveiled about this branding and <coughs> marketing with Douglas, 
we can figure it out and what does it mean and how do we incorporate it into the administration then the broader ATL when um, Madam Chair um, gets that solved um, at the regional level but you get what I'm saying mm -hmm. in, in essence it can evolve you know, mm -hmm. and I see but this evolve. is our basis this is the basis okay yes and, and uh, to your point Commissioner the, the, the answer that I heard and and there were several who asked the question in just slightly different uh, manner from a slightly different angle was we haven't gotten to the point where we're ready to make a decision on that because that will that decision is going to be made by the board when they are uh, composed at the end of the year so I but my guess putting that aside my guess is that MARTA uh, Cobb uh, Gwinnett who have transit operations they're not going to overnight be uh, relabeling all of their fleet. So there's going to be a transition period for everybody, mm -hmm. and the same would be, uh, I would presume, that with the mm -hmm. All right, so then there's a shelf life to perhaps our brain that it will either go away totally, like you said, Beach will say, I want everything to be ATL when you hit the, the comment. When you hit Atlanta, it's one experience. Right. Right. Which means, Commissioner Walker, we just recognize that, well, we're investing in this and we're spending money on wraps and everything else, but there could be some exposure and we have to do some do-overs at some time in the future. Mm -hmm. Is that acknowledged for the record? Right. So it's not a surprise, that we, it's not that we didn't anticipate, it's not that we didn't know that, but again, we were on our own independent path when the region came down with this, but I just, yeah. right. Yeah. To, so it, to, to your point, Chairman, we, we were at a point, we have, we have to move forward uh, with our identity. Yep. Uh, and uh, will be, will be, as, as dictated regionally. Uh, it may be as simple as, the, you know, they're going to put uh, a, an ATL affiliate, yep. you know, along with our logo. I mean, who, who knows? But we can't speculate. We have to, I think we have to move forward. Mm -hmm. I knew that. All right. So the action item is do we want to go ahead and make a recommendation to move forward with this yes. as our? Yes, sir. Mark, you hear that as a recommendation? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Director Valentine, it's a formal recommendation to move forward. So we're going to take this what to the full board to adopt, or we yeah. okay as is. Well, my, my thought on it was to take it to the full board once we get a recommendation from the transportation okay. committee. Um, can I get a motion to uh, adopt the current um, branding artifact and extend as a formal recommendation to the full board commissioners for fortunate approval? So second. I like the mark out there. Uh, as this be a as a the core design to my point to, to reiterate yep. you may have a banner or something where you have a logo here yep. and maybe you have D O U L G I S in, in a vertical pattern so what I'm saying yeah, this is perfect but it may not necessarily be exactly this layout yes but fonts and colors and lettering yes so so Okay, I'll, I'll modify my uh, my motion okay. to include those variables uh, and also the comment that you had made uh, earlier, Commissioner, about the font size being uh, matching the, the connect order. So I've got a motion. Second. Mm -hmm. Second. Let's pause for discussion for a minute. Director Mark. Sir. You're listening to this, right? Loud and clear. All right. If we may have a website that ultimately comes online that we've got this. Some kind of way float, and yet you've got this broad administration that you're balancing. Uh, it's something that we can take up in program committee at some point. But I want the reason I invited him here just to hear this conversation. Say, okay, now we got to sync these brands up and, and make sure that we're, we're taking in consideration these things. So I'm, I'm assuming, and I'm not making it. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sensitive to the executive how they they execute this, but you got to keep these things synced. And um, good luck. Thank you. That, that, that was all. I just wanted to put you on notice. Any comments? Duly noted. Okay. Um, I mean, I think collaboration is the key to success. We have an ongoing um, positive um, level of communication between uh, Directors Valentine, uh, Director Watson, and myself. Um, and as long as we continue to keep that communication open, you know, we can be successful. So you, but you hear the whole point is for you to hear it firsthand. Mm -hmm. You see that you got a couple of things that need to be balanced, and so as it comes out on the other side, you have to keep up with it for us, okay? Got to keep it pure and recognize it. It could evolve, like this one may evolve, and yours may stay constant. Mm -hmm. 
Kelly ba balancing for us, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, we've got a motion and a second. All in favor to make the recommendation as stated? Aye. Aye. Bravo. No nays? All right, next. Director, let's keep going. Yes, uh, next item on the agenda is the uh, a branding and outreach proposal from the collaborative uh, firm. We had discussion, in fact, uh, at the very beginning, uh, when we tried to define the scope of what uh, their effort was going to be, uh, we talked about efforts related to the current uh, services and then potentially outreach related to an input uh, from the community related to the expanded uh, efforts as well related to the uh, fix route bus service. Yeah. And uh, they uh, have to that end uh, conducted uh, those services, conducted the outreach, provided a, a uh, report to us that, that's been circulated and uh, we're ready to uh, consider uh, a, a, another effort going forward related to the now uh, adopted uh, effort to do the uh, uh, fixed bus route service. And I'll let uh, Gary <coughs> in the details uh, related to it. Okay, well, I'm, I'm going to defer to Danielle Crow from the collaborative firm who was here. And Danielle, you want to come up and, uh, oh, no. and Mr. Hightower, I'm sorry. Should I have to defer to my... No, no, no. I'm sorry. I didn't, this I didn't, I didn't see you over no, there. No, it's, it's a team effort. Yeah, um, and also, I think your prior action, I don't want to get involved, commissioners, in your prior discussion, but I think it's very appropriate. The ATO has a current procurement out now on the, on the street. And I think they're looking at all the branding and logos as, as you speak. That I think they have, the, you, may, you may be aware that they are uh, uh, seeking a, uh, 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 assistance. And they have an October 1 to December 31st timetable that they're going to be putting together all agency logos. So I think y'all's action today is very appropriate, what you just took. So that action can be rolled up to their decision making. So that, mm -hmm. I think they have an October 1 to December 31st time, timetable, uh, the ATL uh, group that uh, that's on the on y'all's prior action. So I think it's very timely so that as they begin to discuss this, they have y'all's item in the pot for discussion. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, uh, very briefly, uh, Daniel and I, uh, let me first say uh, to, to, to uh, Mr. Watson, thank you for, he's been extremely uh, helpful, helpful for, as we worked through the last several months of year. Thank you for your assistance and I think uh, commissioners as well. Very briefly, as uh, as uh, uh, as was laid out, uh, we have we have before you a uh, document that, that's in three phases that will, that will carry us through the end of the year. And Daniel and I have uh, uh, work through this and look at it. We can answer specific questions, but obviously, it's, it's a part A, of course, is public input and CMAC grant process. Uh, component B is education and community for current motor motor services, and uh, component C is ed education and community for fixed uh, route buses, and of course, the uh, ongoing support included for each for each piece. Uh, we have uh, uh, we're ready to uh, if, uh, at the uh, appropriate time, uh, commissioners. Once it gets back before the board, if you uh, allow us to continue to serve you, to be uh, ready to start uh, this process uh, the first part of September, based upon y'all's consideration. So I think that's you have it before you. Be happy to answer any questions, sir, and uh, we'll go from there. Right, real, real quick, and again, it's been a while since we all came back together. I took a couple of weeks off and so forth since the last time we all assembled as a group. But again, since we're bringing this back up, um, uh, and Commissioner Walker, you can weigh in, of course, but um, Director, I mean, Director Watson, what was your experience? How important was your role in what we just went through, and why are we extending this? Excuse me. Well, I think they were invaluable in, in the first phase, um, especially in our, our public outreach in, in the, the, the community meetings uh, we had. Uh, we got a lot of good information uh, from those meetings, as, as you were able to see in the report that they uh, they submitted. And and while we made some some strides in letting the public know what we have already and what we're intending to do, I think there's still much much work to be done. Because one thing that we're finding out is is that um, letting the people know about your services is not a week thing or a month thing. It's got to be an ongoing thing. You've got to continually have your name out in front of the public. And I think this, this second phase uh, would be a big step in that direction. 
for us and uh, we would be expanding on some of the things that we started and talked about in that first first phase. And we do want to acknowledge the fact that uh, I think your assignment was just two months that we gave her. I mean, all things being equal, we know it's something that the administration had brought forth, Commissioner Moke here. And last year, we, we, we chose to pause in the, in the fall and waited to the first two years. So, so I think what you did was a yeoman's job, and it was only two months. But now that we've got a little bit more time, um, and I, I think it was acknowledged by some of my other peers uh, at the commission level, where we did one meeting per commissioner district. But it was acknowledged like, okay, we need to do a little bit more. Is that part of this, which is sort of another round of like getting out there, even though we're beyond just the up or down, it's more of a, okay, weigh in on the route, weigh in. I mean, is that part of this? I, I know it's in here, but I need to say it for the record. It is. Yes. And they, they've laid out a very good scope of work for us. Uh, my only comment about it would be is, uh, I would hope that we could build a little flexibility uh, in in the the contract, the scope of work. So as it, when we go forward with this, if we see we need to change things up a little bit or do something on this side instead of doing this, that we have the, the ability to do that. Yeah. And, and so to that point, I'm hearing it's while we're moving into the formal phase of the fixed route and rolling it out, the conversation is make Douglas, third party operator. Uh, and I'm thinking they're our third party communicator, right? Rick? They're, they're our third party communicator as relates to this function. You have a broader, but they they you got a dedicated specialist that's that's communicating syncing. My my things, like but is this really about all fixed routes? Like the next six months, it's all things fixed route? Or am I feeling that we're still talking about expanding, making sure we educate people on some of the already pre existing multimodal services? Because again, what is our focus here? I know the grant that we committed to, that we, or the money that we used to do this in times past, required us to have all things, right? It's, you know, four existing functions and then this one proposed. And I would be on that, or on the other side. Talk to you about Well, I think it would be both. However, in this go round, I think there would be more emphasis on the bus service as opposed to what we have now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 6633. Uh, bus. Uh, roll out information, uh, multiple media. Uh, I see the proposed two uh, two meetings to, to meet the FDA rules. I would like to see four meetings to exceed the FDA rules. Okay. Uh, and then but all the other things, the, uh, the the digital print media uh, should never miss an opportunity to talk about our other services. Okay. But we certainly, I think, at this point, have to emphasize the uh, the fixed route system. And what's the, what's the equation, you know? <clears throat> to, to your point, the, to the public hearing, one during the day, one during the night, which you know is our standard, but you're saying have a couple more. Well, in official public hearings. In other words, yeah, well, I'm you looking think just like having district meetings and just you, you're saying formal, no, all that, have an interest in this, and I mean, talk yeah. to what you're thinking. Well, well I'm saying here that uh, it's been proposed, proposed to have two. Uh, mm -hmm two meetings in central locations, uh, two meetings as required by FTA rules. And I would like to be able to go to my constituents and say, well, we exceeded no problem. You know, the FTA rules. That's, that's all I'm saying. No, uh, no. Now, frankly, you know, we all sit at this table know that most of the ridership is going to come from the center or the eastern it part is. of the county. But that's not to say that we should neglect the far western part of the county because there will be some ridership. And if you look at the, if you look at the uh, 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 route segments. I'm not remember the exact the exact terminology. There's a lot of people out there moving east but going to work. Mm -hmm. in Fort County. So we have to address those people out, out west. And Commissioner, we have no problem changing it to Fort County. Mm -hmm. Quick if question: I, Public hearings, as we define it, are in board meetings. Is that what this is, or is it public meetings? Well, I, we're going to look at the FJ rules. Do you want to you want to answer that? Yeah. Well, if I may share, right. just mm -hmm. as a um, mm -hmm. reminder. During the last transportation committee meeting, we were asked to develop this scope of work in three components. And so that's how this information is divided. What would be done to support public input for the CMAC grant? Mm -hmm. And that's why that information is outlined in terms of those needs. And then secondly, as education and commu um, communications for current services, and so those are separated, and then thereafter, 
education and communication specifically for the fixed route buses. So the information is divided that way in terms of this scope. Um, when it states these two meetings, it's not inclusive of all the, the meetings, other meetings for the entire campaign, mm -hmm. but it's just broken up by those components as requested during the last committee meeting. All right, so, so stay with me. I, I heard you. Thank you. So for CMAC, which ties to the FTA, which is all about the funding, mm -hmm. we know that there's, sorry, here we know that there's two formal public meetings, right? Public hearings where we have to bring them before, make sure they get formal input, that whole, you know, centralized. Is that true? Okay. That's correct, and, and typically the public hearings that we hold on the grant application itself, are, they're very poorly attended. Mm -hmm. But still, it's a federal requirement. Correct. Yes, my critical path, we're going to the project management, that's what we got to have two more, minimal. Mm -hmm. And there's your mole here, if you want to have a couple more, it's not a problem. We that's need to do a minimum problem. to make sure we don't mess up the funding, because okay. again, whether they're there or not, did we hold the meetings? Right. It's not about right. attendance, it's did we have the meetings, did right. we give access? Right. Exactly. Yes, sir. Okay. I don't okay. care if four people come. And, and to his point, I'm saying we have no problem in adding those four. Public meetings that are, uh, is duly advertised, mm -hmm. not an issue. I understand. Mm -hmm. Not an issue. Yeah. That's, that's well, you know not what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I want to make sure I address yes, what sir. he's saying, yeah. just knowing, don't mess up the funding. Yeah, yeah, make sure we hit that, but make sure we need to expand it sure. to get four. No problem. No problem whatsoever. Yes, Commissioner, not, not to belabor the point too much, but, but there is a, a, a difference from, from the procedural standpoint and I guess the legal standpoint mm -hmm. between a public hearing and a public meeting. That's it. What I, mm -hmm. what I, uh, what I hear Commissioner Mulcair speak to is a public meeting uh, in addition to the required public, public hearings mm -hmm. to have additional public meetings. Thank yeah. you for clarifying. And we, we typically have mm -hmm. the public hearings concurrent with a board of commissioners meeting and they're held here mm -hmm. as opposed to a public uh, hearing that we would hold somewhere. All right, so thank you for some So to Matt, um, Madam Chair made a comment um, at, at, as in response to Commissioner Geiger's commentary we would like to have another round in mm -hmm. the district meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, a district, you know, so let's just assume each of the, listen, we got to have the public hearing as a federal requirement for the act, the whole funding part, mm -hmm. that's separate. Mm -hmm. A public hearing, that means two meetings, one during the morning and one during the day, right? That has nothing to do with now these public meetings in each of the commission districts that we already committed to as a board and said if we, if we move forward, we would have that. So that's really six meetings. Each commission district has a chance to take it to their people mm -hmm. in their respective districts. And then you got the public hearing, which is an independent process. Mr. Smoker, are you agree with yeah, that? I, yeah, I appreciate that. I think what I was focusing on was the headline, uh, a component A is public, in, public input, right. which doesn't automatically think in terms of a, uh, a legally required public hearing uh, as opposed to public input. Uh, it's, a, it's a question of semantics. Okay, all right, well, look at this. All right, so let me, that's yeah. the project manager. If I've got. <clears throat> Four commission districts. And everybody's input, we don't want it to be in a book that nobody gets to see. This is important. Mm -hmm. They go to each of these commission districts, they give input on something, the new routes. We now compile all that, aggregate all four commission districts into this set of public hearings during the day and the morning. In other words, everybody weighed in. I'm, I'm saying each district had their own autonomous independent input into the process of route smoothing and everything. We've got that data. Now we're going to bring that into a formal public hearing during the morning and during the day in which we sign off. In other words, we have four district meetings. Mm -hmm. Everybody weighed in. And now you take this public hearing morning and day and you submit that formally. Mm -hmm. Does that fulfill the spirit of this? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm syncing up. In other words, Mike talks to his district the way he talks to his district, no different than Mitchell and me. But everybody gets their own independent input. And that comes into like, so now when they show up at the public hearing, everybody gets to see themselves in this one view and they get to shape it. Is that? Yes, sir. That's I'm perfect. just trying to. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Clarity to be understand what we're trying to do. Gotcha. Four distinct district meetings that must be before the public hearing, which mm -hmm. is the formal that Madam yes. Chair will facilitate in her. Gotcha. Home. Yes, mm -hmm. we're good. Okay. A morning and a day. Yes. Mm -hmm. just, I, I got to do it for the record so we're clear. That's all. You good? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Anything else on that? All right. So I think we could. Yes. Yes. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Oh yeah. No. I just. 
Because I didn't want to uh, be out of order. I wanted to, uh, I love what I'm hearing. And from a communications perspective, I wanted to uh, uh, chime in and offer the strategy that, uh, from a communications perspective, uh, as soon as a date and time has been set, how critical it is that it's communicated to us. You know, okay. as soon as a location um, has been confirmed and a time, I'd love to um, advertise that and promote that immediately um, because we execute information in a number of ways, not only through social media, but through our, the website and as well as the email blast uh, for happenings. You know, so we really, I, I really want to do the best we can um, as a communications and community relations department to leave no stone unturned in letting the public know when and where uh, something occurs. And I just, you know, even if a decision, for example, okay, a decision is made after hours, after five o'clock or six o'clock, I encourage to be notified. Let's not wait okay. until eight o'clock in the morning no the next day. I, I just wanted to encourage. Yeah. Um, You're in a 24 hour a day job. Correct. <laughs> and that's what I wanted, yeah. and that's what I wanted to reiterate, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. No problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's what I just, you know, wanted to share just for the record. No yeah. problem. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Right. But, but, but to that point, I, I don't want to lose this. I'm going to go back to the need to, who's coordinating my schedule? Right? Who's coordinating that? Okay, we need to have this application to the FDA by 12 1. Okay, therefore, we need to back up from there. That's a deadline. Then, who's going, when are we going to have this formal public hearing in two days, which means backs up from there? Then, who's going to coordinate my fourth? I'm back to one more time. Who's going to be coordinating all this? Because everybody's taking care of their own independent would say, like, okay, my job is just to do this. Gary, I got to come back to you. I've been doing FTA grants for 30 years, so I think I can handle this. You got, but you get what I'm looking for, yeah. which is well, where's my one view? This is so that we all know you're a walking institutional knowledge, right? No 30 years walks out the door. Here we are. Where is it at my, on my website that we all can go to and we know here's where the project is, here's the project schedule, here's the critical path? So it doesn't, I'm not taking away from what. You, I'm mean, saying what the system needs is that it has to live beyond just your walking knowledge. I mean, that, that's what I'm saying. I'm back to that formal schedule so that we all can be on the same page. In other words, I shouldn't have to call you. I want to know this at 10 o'clock at night because I'm on the phone with Madam Chair at 11 o'clock. You're asleep. Y'all off. But I need to talk about this schedule. You know, mm -hmm. you know where I'm going. Okay, mm -hmm. let's, let's keep going, guys. Mm -hmm. All right, so now, um, Commissioner Mulford, I want to come back to... Uh, I think, I think we get this to the gist of this. Uh, funding. Right. How much did this, uh, we go back, I know what yeah. I thought the number was, but we go back to 485. So we're keeping it within the context of the same amount as before. Is mm -hmm. that by design, or is it just the way this worked out? That's sort of both. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not, I mean, you don't have to yeah. say Can y'all explain how y'all arrived at that number? Is it broken up by component or segments? It just it's broken up by components, by hours, per task. Okay. And we do a grid on, 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 on the tasks that are associated mm -hmm. with it. And I, and I think on the page, uh, it, should, it should be noted that we had August 22nd, that's today, but it should be September, uh, probably September the 5th, which is the day after you, the board meets again. Because I think this has to be for the board on its first meeting in September, because mm -hmm. I believe it's September the, the 4th. Mm -hmm. We meet on the 4th and 5th or 3rd and 4th? 3rd and 4th, I thought. Oh, we got it broken. Yeah. Third, yeah. Third, 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 yes, yeah. we meet. On the fourth Thursday, Thursday and Tuesday. Yes. And Tuesday, so yes, Tuesday, Tuesday. Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So is this kind of race uh, on that Tuesday after if, if the board decides to move forward? Mm -hmm. Right. So talk us through real quick, just top level. So there's services that you're providing, and then there's incidentals or indirect costs. Break that up for us. Well, and I and I have there to assist. I think uh, in the document, I think they were we had included in the early on. Uh, some consideration for those indirect costs as it relates to the to the uh, uh, the bus wrapping and and those those items and I uh, then if you'll be, be prepared to talk about those indirect costs but that's kind of it was a two part proposal one mm -hmm. was just the services for the collateral firm which was the forty eight five the other was for those other costs in addition to that 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 would we essentially serve as a pass through to get those things done the wrapping and any other uh, design costs. Okay. 
and, and, and please weigh in, but Gary, make sure we justify for the record what this additional cost and where that came from and why we're doing the wrap and then we do this first have this conversation. Can you make sure we cover that? Sure. Okay, thank you. Uh, so I guess to elaborate on what Michael has shared in terms of the um, other direct costs for graphic design and production, uh, during phase one, we provided some design services, as we've already mentioned, like the local design, but actual production of materials are expenses that are incurred by the county. So uh, we can work with someone and, and work with a, a graphics team to design those bus wraps, but the actual production cost uh, would be decisions uh, made by the county because it varies whether or not you're going to wrap all veins at once or you know, if you're gonna do the, the uh, cutaways, uh, it's all dependent upon how you move forward. Um, other things, other considerations during phase one, there was some thoughts on whether or not you all would like to um, create a stronger digital presence by having a standalone website for um, Douglas uh, County Multimodal Transportation. This, these other costs um, address that. But should you decide not to do them, it does not impact the other services that we are um, conducting in the three components already outlined relative to communication, education, and outreach, and public input. Right. So 48, 48, co uh, 48 covers the three components. And then there's some additional stuff that you've acknowledged that we've said along the way that you captured. So Gary, talk to us about this wrap. We talked about that from day one, and that was part of the whole. Talk to us about that. Well, we got to do it. Yeah, we, we're obviously starting a new service yep. that, that we want to kick off with the bang and we want it to be successful from the very beginning. We, we want our, our vehicles and everything we do to have a nice, bright, attractive look that, that catches people's attention. Yep. And the best way to do that related to the vehicles is, is to put a wrap on them. And not just simply have Douglas County Van pool on it or some, something, something like that. So uh, the wraps themselves are very important, and then the design of those wraps are going to be very important too. If, if I may add, um, and I'm sure that uh, Rick would also weigh in. It's very important when we talked about, and when we talked about rolling out a communication plan, it was important that it was integrated, comprehensive, and holistic it becomes watered down if we present things in one phase uh, with the new branding and then everything else is under the old hat. Um, the public doesn't know which is which. Also during our initial research, it was stated that most people found out about that service by seeing the van. If that is our one of our best selling points, then it needs to be consistent with what we're rolling out. So this is part, and I'm going to a broad idea, we, it was an asset acquisition we would acquire these vans, eight or nine, whatever the case may be. And of course something needs to go on them, we need to mark them. So what we're saying that there needs a formal marketing brand, or whatever you want to call it, yeah. on these assets that we have acquired. So um, Commissioner Walker, this is more of a, was that part of the, the 300 some odd thousand thing? Talk to me about where did we, just that part right there, the market, was that already accounted for in our conversation with the board commissioners, either through the, the budget process or through that capital compensation fund? Help frame that for he and I. This, this is, is something new. And actually, we address that in the next item related to the transportation center. So if, if we can hold off a few minutes, we'll, we'll bring more information to you about that. Okay. okay. One thing that occurs to me, uh, is that there's, there's several touch points with a third party operator. And, and one of them is the, the digitalization mm -hmm. because they're, they're going to come in with an app. Mm -hmm. They're going to come in with a, with a, a technology component and we're proposing, we're proposing a technology component. Uh, so where do, where do they touch and, and where are they uh, independent? And I think that has to be that has to be discerned, very, you know, very clearly, mm -hmm. so we, we don't leave a gap or a disconnect or, or the wrong colors. You know what I'm saying. So here's my question. This is I'm, I'm still going to push back, which is um, we hired you for communications. Mm -hmm. you know, your firm is known for planning, 
formal plan. And I'm still back to his point, like, okay, but who's synchronizing all this? It's not just who comes before the board of commission says, okay, approve this, appropriate that. My like, gosh, there's some real, this needs to be synchronized across a lot of business units, a lot of autonomy, a lot of moving parts. I'm still like, okay, but you got to, you, my, my challenge is, is Director Watson, is not that you don't know it, but your plate is full like most directors. It, the, the level of focus that there needs to be, there needs to be a dedicated project manager. And so in here, I'm hearing that well, my job is just to communicate. I'm like, Dad, but don't they, well, why are you communicating? Can you not talk about everything then? Since you to communicate, you got to know what's going on. So I'm, I'm, well, I know I'm not trying to expand scope, but I think it, it's fundamental to his point, which is like, I, what I don't want to hear is, you know, three, four months from now, where, okay, that's not, we, we didn't scope that in, so therefore it's not our responsibility. So you got a third party operator, third party communicator, you got a director that's sort of doing this, you, you got, my guys, who's going to be, who's, who's ultimately responsible for to commission more working points? Who's coordinating everything across the board? Not just who has authority. But who's ultimate? Because I'm like, gosh, this is, it, it's not like, like you said, you got 30 years, I got just as much as far as projects. So it's like, okay. So I'm looking at you like, okay, there's somebody who's missing here. I know what needs to be done, but I can't do it because I'm a board of commissioner. It's not my job to sit here like, okay, guys, I can come up with project skills and do all this. Like, no. Well, I think I think my comment on that would be if y'all want me, want me want to get me an assistant to handle all that, I'd be more than happy to handle one. <laughs> uh, other, other than that, again, everything falls on me with the help mm -hmm. of Danielle, with the help of our, our transit services manager. They they report to me and, and they help me direct all of this. Now, I'll go back to my my experience working with a collaborative firm in, the, in this, yeah. this phase one. To me, with the work that they did in phase one, Danielle was the project manager. She and I talked on a, a regular basis, sometimes almost almost on a daily basis, and we worked, we worked through things, we worked through scheduling. Now, Mr. Hightower was graciously always available if I needed him, but Danielle was my point person. Right. And so, so we didn't have any issues, things worked out well. And, and I would say going forward with this second phase, we would work under that that same system. Right, so we just close the without the labor. So right, that she innately has the skill set we're talking about. No Absolutely, doubt. Absolutely, yes. Check. Right. But her responsibility was just my job was to say these meetings on these days and we'll go out here and do this, but it's not my job to reconcile your inner workings of your organization to keep up any of my job is to stay local, but this is our scope of work. And I'm talking about those gaps, which is like I get it. She can do both. But what I'm hearing is that she's like, my job was just to communicate, these are where the meetings are, y'all need to be there now. This is what I'm gonna go do. But I'm looking at the, to his point, but who's responsible for ensuring, okay, Rick, let's all get the room and work through this issue and manage it. And I, Commissioner Mulcair, I mean, I, and I'm not trying to over-design, and I know they could do it. The question is, do we want them to do it as opposed to a third-party communicator? Are they our third-party planner that as part of their job, they communicate? Because what I'm hearing just communicators like, okay, I just got to coordinate six meetings. I got to get a pretty graphic together and wrapping and so forth. And, I'm like, and, and that's about it. And I'm like, they bring more value than that. But if we don't put them on the hook for it, I'm concerned. So well, as far as I'm concerned, they're on the hook for it. Uh, pragmatically speaking, this is what we have. Right? Unless we're talking about hiring and hiring somebody else, and we're already talking about a transportation service uh, coordinator, manager, that sort of thing, reporting to, to uh, uh, Gary. So we have what we have, and it's it's proven effective, okay. and and I'm not unconfident uh, that we it will continue going forward. Mm -hmm. The only other solution is let's talk about another position, another hiring, another you know job description, you know temporary or, or whatever. Y'all waiting? Now, Gary says I think one. I mean, I don't want to. I, I, my mama told me never to meddle, uh, Mr. Steele, and, and, and in house never matters. meddle in, a, in the house <laughs> matters. You get you get a spanking pretty fast. So, and being as the kind of manager, yes. you know, you understand what I'm talking about. So I don't, I don't like to meddle. Daniel and I want to at least stay in the room, don't we, Daniel? So anyway, so I want to meddle. One of the things that, and let me just say this, and, and uh, as Gary indicated, we, he and Danielle are kind of like two peas in a pod. So I guess, as you know. Uh, a great team, and, and the only thing I can think of in the interim, I heard the earlier discussion, if there's any way that the firm can assist Gary until the position is filled, we would be honored to, to at least maybe look see how that looks. And we have 
uh, and we are involved in some other transportation planning uh, uh, engagement. So that's where we consist on an interim basis. Uh, if that is the wishes of Gary and the board, we have it until, until the position gets filled. That's something that we can, that's in our bucket. All right, so, all right, so what Miguel just here is maybe it's just simply all we're looking for is a project schedule to list everything that everybody has to do, mm -hmm. and everything is aligned according to milestones, critical path. I, I think you know what I'm trying to say. I'm just looking for that, that document, that view, that everybody in the county, inside and out, know where we are. I don't think you have to hire a full-time person to produce this when I know I can do this tomorrow by myself. Mm -hmm. But I'm looking for the skill set that is capable, like that general the value of giving us the single view of the project. And so if it's just a matter of expanding well, it to say, guys. Yeah, uh, to your point, Commissioner, uh, it, what I hear you saying is I, I, don't, I don't want us to miss any critical deadlines or any elements to. I want to know them. Uh, you you want to know ahead of time so you can program them in and, and get them taken care of. That is the broader view. What I hear Gary saying is, I'm going to do those things, and you're saying, okay, well, let's package that together in some fashion to make sure that nothing's missed. Well, we can look to getting a project schedule developed for this as a project, yeah. and we can we can assist uh, with, uh, with Gary and, and some of the staff in transportation to be able to put something together. And uh, we'll review it and circulate, make sure there's nothing missing, and we'll go from there. Yeah. All right, I won't belabor it. Um, Commissioner Smoke here, let, let's, I want to be sensitive to time. Uh, I know there's something before us. Um, our goal is not, it, it's not going to be on tonight's agenda, but mm -hmm. it's something for us as a community to discuss. We know we need this. Mm -hmm. Any more thoughts? I mean, I'm going to come back to. No, I have a public, you know, Microsoft project. I mean, right. uh, you know, something, something like that that I, I think several of us have, have, have used in the past right. uh, it, it's, it's crucial. Uh, you may not know us, but a big part of my background working on airplanes. When you've got 2,000 non-routine work items and 2,000 routine work items, there we go. and you can't close up the plate, you can't replace the fuel valve if you close up the plate. You yeah. have to leave the plate off until you replace the valve and the inspections and everything. Mm -hmm. So I know exactly what, what you're saying, but I have confidence in, in uh, our DOT staff coming up with a timeline, crit critical path, and, and milestones. Yeah, and uh, exploring the expertise of, the, of our collaborative group, Gary. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm confident. Uh, and, 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 I, and I was going to say that again earlier, if outside of this role that we're doing, uh, if, 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 if there's other things that we can help out with Miguel and with Gary and our transportation planning bucket, we stand available to help if that, if that need arises. That's all. We yes, no, because I was just going to say, as, as shared during working with phase one, there is a distinction between us conducting a transportation study and transportation planning like functions, like mm -hmm. implementing the fixed route system, as opposed to us communicating right. about this. And so currently our scope of work is communication and right. public mm -hmm. I'm saying, but, but I'm saying on time. Mm -hmm. I know, and that's, that's what I'm saying, that's in addition to that. that. And, I, and I'll circle back to the third uh, uh, the, the route operator, third party, uh, the operator, we're getting into their bailiwick now. Mm -hmm. they, they're running the day to day, like, okay, they, they, they go, go well, they're planning to, too. Yeah. yeah. To get to that point. All right, so what's our takeaway? Mark, you get all that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. All right, so are we okay? I think with it? Under control. All right, so as a committee, just look for the current moment, we've got a contract under consideration that was three. Uh, a three phase, three component scope of work that comes up to 45 or 48,000 for existing work. I want to make sure I reconcile this second part. You said you're going to come back to this later, which is the additional with the wrap of 30 something. Yeah, on the, on the next item we'll talk right, about. So let's, if no more conversation yep. on this, can we move forward? We'll come back to that part. We're just going to pause right now. Okay. Miguel, can we move to the next item? Absolutely, Chairman. Uh, next item on the agenda is a uh, transportation center addition now that goes to certainly to the delivery of the fixed route bus service and uh, there has been ongoing plan planning over the last uh, year or year and a half uh, and schematics uh, put together for an expansion of the existing building to accommodate 
uh, the bus service and, and other elements of uh, uh, transportation. And uh, there was a, a request, uh, it was a, a, a bid that, uh, that was floated, and uh, the bids came back uh, above our estimated, uh, above our budget, certainly above our estimate. So we're going to have to reconcile how to proceed forward on this. And uh, I believe at the last commission, uh, at the last uh, committee meeting, there was a graphic of uh, the proposed addition to the to the uh, mm -hmm. transportation center mm -hmm. uh, that you got to see. Uh, and, and Gary, uh, if you would run us through where we are in terms of the response to the RFP and uh, budget lines. Okay. If you if you'll take a look at the sheet I just handed out. And this is something that Mark Hill and I talked about uh, right before uh, the meeting. In bullet point number one, you'll see that in our 2018 budget, we have a total of $1,232,686 allocated for construction of the Transportation Center addition. The uh, preferred contractor that the evaluation committee chose submitted a bid of, of one million six hundred eighty five thousand five hundred so that leaves a gap of four hundred fifty two thousand eight hundred fourteen dollars that we need uh, to build the transportation center addition now i will say that this contractor was not the low bidder um, the evaluation committee uh, was not real sold on the low bidder, and so we moved on to somebody else. But that was mainly based on experience with this type of facility. Correct, correct. Mm -hmm. Now, their, their low, uh, the low bidder's proposal was a little over $1.3 million, so it's closer in line than the, the money that we have budgeted. And if we chose to go with the low bidder, we, we might could negotiate within budget. All right, so that's where we stand with the transportation center addition. If you go to bullet point number two, you see projects that we need to get started on during the remainder of 2018. However, these are not budgeted items. And you can see what they are. We need to order eight additional cutaways for the fixed route bus service. We need to order the, the routes for cutaways, routes for nine new vans that we just received. And also you see uh, $50,000 for the collaborative firm and then 20 additional thousand additional dollars for some of the, the extra items they mentioned a while ago. So that's a total of $628,000 in unbudgeted projects. The split on that is $446,400 in federal money with $181,600 local match. Now, after Mark and I talked, we, we kind of want to throw two, two options out to you. One would be to go back to the low bidder and negotiate the, the price of the transportation center addition to see if we can get that under budget. I don't, let's back up just one second. Okay. I don't think we can negotiate with anybody until we've issued a contract. Correct. Correct. So go ahead. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> if, if we go back and, and propose a contract to the low bidder, then we can negotiate with them to try to get the transportation center addition within budget. All right. So that's if we do that, we still we're still having to look at six hundred twenty eight thousand dollars in unbudgeted projects that we need to, to work on for the remainder of this year. The second option. Now, part of that 628 is grant funding, right? Which we would get reimbursed. So technically, as far as a hit to the budget, you're talking 181,600. Right. And we could we could take this this portion of the year. Whenever we hire the transportation services director, the first part of the year, he was budgeted. Or that person was budgeted for the entire year. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we could use the first half or first two-thirds funding, whatever it ends up being, and apply it to this number, which would decrease it to somewhere around possibly 120, 130. Right. That's in cash money. 
as matched. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's option number one. The second option is to delay construction of the transportation center addition until 2019 or 2020 mm -hmm. and use the money that we had budgeted for it in 2018 to fund these other projects that, that we need to go forward with. And the bottom line on that is if we took that option, delay the construction of the transportation center and use a portion of that money for these other projects, that would actually end up with a, a savings of $123,937 for the county and its local match. So, so quick question, as far as negotiating with a contractor or either with either one of them, um, included in the contract or in the plans was renovation of existing, how many existing offices? Two offices. There's two existing. Right. That's that's included in that proposal. Okay. So that really, even if we did those in-house, that wouldn't be, I uh -huh. time like that. Would make a big but that is, that's a little bit. We could chip away at Right. Because we could do those in-house with property management. Right. So that's and that that's only two, so that's right. not a big. Yeah. My reaction would be, I mean, I would be concerned in terms of putting the project off, reallocating the money, because the cost is going over two years is going to escalate. Mm -hmm. It's going to go up another twenty. Yeah, and that, that's that's the problem that we've had. Y'all yeah. had a discussion yesterday. You're on a treadmill. I mean, you know. yeah. And th this this our proposals came in at about two hundred forty-five dollars a square foot on this which is very close to the number we're hearing on yeah. those other buildings 245 you said mm -hmm. we're here in 250. Yeah. Mm -hmm. all right so that maybe i for a minute so so one more time the targeted source of funds not that many there's a general fund, there's a capital transportation fund. Is there any money in the capital transportation fund that would support the local match to fulfill this one star ticket? Yes, the balance is 454000 yes, That's the balance? Yes, sir. That's the balance. At the beginning of the year, Commissioner Wolfgang, we did, when we took money out and I went and put the buses back in and that whole process we went through. And so there was some money that was that has been approved as part of this general fund budget that's tied to capital transportation. And we put aside what 400, 450. I can't remember what the exact number is. 368 comes to mind. But that's that's not about 368, 360. Yeah, we threw the buses back in at the last minute. We sort of like, okay, we. I know what I did. So we, we, let's just know we we it was one of those last minute maneuvers. Was like, now we're gonna put that back in the budget. Right, and they got approved, they didn't get taken out. So I guess my question is, is that number that you're talking about, did that take all the capital transportation funds or that was money that was earmarked independently? I want to make sure I hear what I'm listening to. Because there's work, you don't go on the 500,000, mm -hmm. we'll come back to well, that. Well, I'm not sure about that 500,000, but the 364, 368 that Mark uh, yeah. is talking about was earmarked for specific projects, one of them being the, the addition to the transportation center. It's already included in the budget. It is not included in the 454000 remaining in the capital transportation fund. Those are independent. 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 All right. We can keep going. I mean, because if we had to make a trade, I'd like, okay, that's a different conversation. Go one more time for the record. I need confirmation of this, guys, uh, which is where was it approved? That we had this 363, and again, we said to find this committee meetings, but I, I just need to put mm -hmm. the record. Here's where this 362 is, and here's where we also had this independent balance of cash left. I need confirmation so I can look more commissioner Walker and I say, okay, this is what we got to work with. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to be a, a sleight of hand. It has to be. We already earmarked this money. It's already set aside $362,000, mm -hmm. and it's for the. I know it was, I just need it for the record. Yeah. Well, we did you both of them? Does it make sense? Where yeah, we're just, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. The money that was earmarked for the tra for the transportation uh, center addition was included in the 2018 budget. Yes. 
and the 454,000 remaining, the balance in the CTF, uh, mm -hmm. we just went over in the Finance Committee. Yep. So we have that report. Mm -hmm. I knew that. I wanted to make sure this other didn't, it wasn't going to bleed in. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the only thing that is not included in the 2018 budget yes. or currently included as an earmarked item or an encumbered item for the capital transportation fund are items number uh, number two. This is right there. Got it. That, that's okay. So, and actually, I think there's a mistake on one of them. Here, you shouldn't have collaborated firm phase two now say 48.5 instead yeah, of Yeah, I 20. just ran that number up to 50. Yeah, that's right. 48 something. So, 48.5. So, we smoked. I want to make sure we understand what the ask. Oh, my bad. I see it. No, I'll just, I'm sorry. That's okay. I thought it was 20. It's 48.5 is really all we're trying to account for in this meeting because everything else has already been accounted for either to the capital transportation fund that was part of the earlier budget or the balance. Is that true? No. There's a $181,000 max that are included in all these items under number two, which includes the 48.5 of the collaborative firm as one of the items, but there are five more items included under bullet number two. I got it. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so 181 is, is the bogey. 181 minus whatever we've saved so far on the transportation coordinator. That's not all right, but just say for 181. Yeah, so 181. Answer. All right, Commissioner Moore, okay, so the ask is 181 out of the remaining balance. Let me make sure I get this right. The source is the remaining balance of the capital transportation fund. Four, what did you say, 460, 480? Yeah. 454. Right now it's roughly 454 as of yesterday. Yes, okay, 460. Okay, 454. Yeah. I'm almost positive. So, no. Mm -hmm. Okay, right now. So. That's right. Mm -hmm. So, look at 181 commitment as a recommendation out of here. We'll be able to fulfill items two. Can I get it right? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. um, it also gives you authority to move forward on what was already in the budget, right? Am I saying this right, Wayne? Yes. Well, yes, but, but. <laughs> we have an issue with the transportation center, so we need to make a decision or a re recommendation on what we do with that out. Because what might you interview with the budget? Help me. Well, that's the 452. I mean, that's your that's your balance in your capital transportation fund. Mm -hmm. Is your shortfall for your uh, transportation center? But if, if we if we choose to go back to the low bidder uh, their low bid was 1.3 something we've got 1.2 uh, in the budget for this project so we think if we propose a contract to the low bidder uh, we can probably get that project within budget well and, and gary we also had some discussion about actually negotiating with this uh, uh, bidder that gave us uh, the, the bid that you have identified 1685 and uh, there is the potential to reduce that as well without getting into the complications that we shied away from the low bidder in the first place uh, right. mm -hmm. it scares me yeah the, we have a review committee we ought to, we ought to trust them yeah. mm -hmm. and they weren't confident in the low bidder the, on, the only thing is it, is that in discussions with the architect and the, the evaluation committee, if, if we go choose to negotiate with this particular contractor who gave us a 1.6 million bid, mm -hmm. we believe that the only way to to get those budgets uh, in the same ballpark is to to eliminate the training bay aspect of the addition. And that's a big concern to our risk and safety director who says that he's pitched a lot of uh, uh, maintaining our insurance through our carrier on on that training bay. So that that as well is a concern. But there are other possibilities. We can leave it open instead of enclosing it. Just have a roof over it. Big That's a possibility. Yeah. 
I see. What do you think, Commissioner Mulk here? I mean, I'm still hearing a balance of a number that we did not, that just has, we're now acknowledging that number. Yeah. And there has to be a source for that number. Yeah. So I'm just. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm just, I'm, uh, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm a little concerned about just going to the, to the low bidder and not getting the, the type of uh, facility that we're, and we have a record, have a, well, have a good and, record. And I will say that there was considerable concern among the evaluation yeah. committee about the low bid. Yeah, well, that's, that's what I'm saying. So why would we go counter against that concern when you have problems? And I said, well, we told you something. Yeah. So the, yeah. final, the final remaining balance um, in the capital transportation month fund is $454,530. Mm -hmm. It's unencumbered. It's just sits here. Four fifty four mm -hmm. by the mm -hmm. unencumbered. No, I mean, this is what it was for. I just see the opportunity to understand. Mm -hmm. Reckon I mean you replenish that. <laughs> We've got a budget cycle coming yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. But but then we still don't get there. We're still short, sure. right? Mm -hmm. We're still two hundred short. Well, we haven't negotiated at all with this contract. Of course we hadn't issued a contract. Right. right. So, mm -hmm. Still I would. Uh, we don't know where we are until until we issue a contract and negotiate with this contractor. And we don't know. We don't know where we are really. Is there a way to phase this and again spread it? Let us ease the pain, or we just have to do it all at once and just on the building itself. Well, we d we discussed that yeah. and uh, about the possibility of building the the train bay. Yeah. At a, at a later time, but the general opinion was that yeah, if we're going to build it, do it, do it now. I don't know how much you'd save. Right, well, Cut yeah. that out. Right. I mean, if you're, you're seventy thousand dollars short, what's the difference between that and ninety thousand dollars short? Right. Right. So short of the transportation building, we have a contract that scope of work that they're running in parallel. We got to keep moving, right? So. Um, it sounds like we still need to work through this existing um, transportation services building project, which is independent of this fixed route bus system project. Uh, and we're tying the funding together, but it's like, okay, guys, it's going to take us a minute to get our minds around okay, how much is it going to cost us? You still got to go through that whole process and then bring it back, and we got to agree to, to award and do whatever. But yet, we still got this independent scope of word that needs to keep going. So can we make can we decouple them to make a how do we want to package this decision today? We're not ready to move on the trend. I mean, we don't know the number, nor do we know the extra source to fund it as is. In other words, do it all at once. I, I can't answer that right now. No. 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 I just can't. I don't have enough to commit to. Um, I guess looking at uh, delaying the construction of, of the transportation center uh, and freeing up uh, 1.5 million dollars. I, I, I go back to my previous statement. I think it's still salient. Uh, you know, if we delay it one two years, and it's you know it's going to cost us you know 1.8 uh, or something in the future. But looking at the items, uh, I'm looking at 300 thousand dollars for furniture and equipment. For an, for an addition, or are we replacing everything in the building? That's just for the addition. Now, part of part of that is a one hundred and fifteen thousand dollar driving simulator to train all county drivers on. Well, so we can apply that towards the transportation center addition. Yeah, if you didn't do that, build build the the bay. And hold off on the simulator. And yeah, well, well, I mean, we could do that. We could we could build the room for the simulator, but not buy the simulator. Did you that Kelly? The simulator is one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we're just trying to get through the current one four months from the end of the year, and I'm just trying to make it work for what we got to work mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. right? And get through the new budget cycle. We we're probably in a different place. I just, based on the knowledge and the intelligence we got right now before us, I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. you know. I'm not, um, it's not fixed yet for me if I want to go to the general fund to like, gosh, we, no, we got to do better. It's, it's, you know, there's a, there's a floor for all this, right? It, it, it is, I, I just need, I need a little bit more information on this. So, so, all right, so I can get my question answered. 
which is let, let, let me have uh, another bit of information because if if you were to consider just doing the building if, if we could get it within striking distance of the budget and uh, not put the equipment in that would only free up sixty thousand or three hundred thousand because that's only our that's money. Right. That's the, right. The, the two hundred forty federal funds we would not get if we do not do that. So Okay, so it's specifically for furniture and equipment. Mm -hmm. No, okay. Yeah. No, I didn't realize that. Yeah, so it's yeah. not it's not the total is it, it's, not it's almost straight. like all the internet. I mean you almost have to line it all up to get any real benefit. There's no real savings. That's what I was looking at your yeah. savings component, and I'm like, I don't, I don't see how we realize that based on current conditions. So, right. any recommendation, guys? No, one, one. Uh, I think to to get us to where we can be in position to make it an informed decision would be to move forward with uh, selecting the, the target contractor and negotiating mm -hmm. with the contractor and arriving at their best and final offer for doing this and then we can come back and say here's where we are because until we do that we, we don't, don't have that best of all i agree we don't know where we're short mm -hmm. we know where and how much now how long does that process take recognizing what you presented you mixed well according to mr peacock we would have to we would have to take it to the board award the contract mm -hmm. to his recommended <coughs> contractor then negotiate then come back with a final price. If, if we make a recommendation today, I can have it on the agenda for the next work session to, to negotiate with this contract or award a contract to this contractor so yeah. we can negotiate with the, the next work session. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. No. Not, uh, not tonight. Yeah, I don't like doing it. No. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So, are we tying? We've got a fixed route. You've got on today's agenda to award a third party operative contract. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. Where's my third party communicator coming all this? You're tying, based on what I'm hearing, we're tying the funding source along with this building. And I'm like, okay, so what, that's two months out? When do we bring the third party communicator on board? Which is back to my point. Do we decouple this? In other words, like, okay, Commissioner Roper, we may have to go ahead and spot this as is. Because waiting two months, we're, we're defeating the whole point of having a third party communicator. It's not synced. But you're talking about the collaborative firm phase right. two, right? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, one more time. Who's in this? Like, well, yeah, my default project manager like, okay, but these, I get this, and it's going to run on its own. But like, okay, but what about this? Did they need to be on board with third party operator at the same time? Well, I, I think one and two are two separate, separate items. Uh, you can vote on each one of them independently, or you can vote on the two of them uh, together. And regardless of what we what we do, and each item in number two are separate items. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Want to make sure that. I get the approval, guys. We're talking about funding. It, it, Commissioner Volker, it, it, it comes down simply, how are we going to fund each one of these? Right. Right. I understand. And, and so that's, uh, I'm keeping this real simple. Mm -hmm. I understand, yep, we got to take any political optics out of the way for a second. Commissioner Volker, I'm like, okay, this is math. This is going to cost us 48 plus some change. All right, because they need to synchronize with the decision that we're going to make tonight, perhaps move part forward with a third party operator. That's my critical path at, in the next 24 hours. I gotta get there. Us going to the board of commissioners talking about this transportation service and these options that you gotta negotiate, that's a different path. That's gonna take a minute. This thing is moving fast and like, okay guys, we just, it, it, I'm trying to force a decision that says, okay, I get this. I get the need you want to build and you wanna do the build out, we need this expansion. But I'm like, okay, but what we can't do is experience what we just went through that we're so focused on this, this facility, which sometimes we do, we get caught up in, in the buildings. I'm like, but that is not more important than communicating to the public 
There is no way that I can put an emphasis on this process of getting this new building built, another building built, versus like, I gotta communicate to the public. This gotta be out the gate. It can't be, oh, we'll get back to it, okay, y'all will synchronize, like, guys, no. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back to it. Right now, I, I mean, again, I, I, I need it in this order. We need to deal with the third party communicator to go along with the third party operator tonight. I need that as an independent choice. And I'll get to the whole part of uh, the building, which is no problem. But because again, we have to authorize the source of money for the third party communicator. You know, it's wouldn't come 48, up 48, 5. 48, 5. We'll have to come up with the, expense, the specifics, but wouldn't come up with, wouldn't possibly come up with that 50,000. That's what we need to do to keep, keep on track. Right. Mm -hmm. right. If we're going to do what we're going to do tonight. Yeah, but I'll have to just go through the budget. Well, it's there. I just need this committee to know that we're going to take $50,000 for that. We get to know where we're going. It's like we're agreeing to take 45, whatever money is, to award this component alone to keep moving, to synchronize the decision we're going to make with the third party operator to tonight. 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 Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm trying to accomplish. Recognizing you got this bigger building, and I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. But we cannot not wait a month and so while y'all work through this whole building thing to communicate to the public. They got to come out the gate together. No, you used to go for the third party the, the operator. operator. Mm -hmm. The zoning agenda tonight is not the collaborative firm. I said, right. 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 you're already behind. Right. 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 We're already two weeks behind. I mean, I would have loved for them both be on today's agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, I, I actually asked, I know there was a desire not to do that, like, but I really wanted on this agenda for this very point. So it still comes back to my point. We got to get these guys on board. Uh, we can't experience what we experienced by but the, the optics that we're not communicating. So, can I get a recommendation? And again, we'll say not to exceed 50 for direct costs, and then we've got this indirect cost that y'all say y'all gonna take care of through these others, right? From wrap and all that, right? There's direct cost of 48.5, and there's an indirect cost that's associated with this agreement for whatever that balance, 37,000 for the wrap and all that. And we're gonna that's that's showing. Uh, bullet point two. Right. Those other Can I make a motion? Yes, sir. I make a motion that we uh, make a recommendation to the full board to uh, employ uh, the collaborative group for Connect Douglas Phase Two at an amount not to exceed fifty thousand dollars for direct cost and what about the indirect cost. We don't I'm, not, that I'm not mentioning the right. indirect cost. Give me that. Give So we'll go on. All right. So we got a motion. For fifty thousand, I took see fifty thousand dollars for crab and firm. We got a second. Any more discussion? We have to determine where the funding is coming from. And we don't have a number for me. I'll modify my my motion that we employ the collaborative group for phase two for an amount not to exceed fifty thousand dollars contingent on locating the funding. Second. Yeah, I'm second in discussion. My question is, why wouldn't we use the capital transportation fund balance that's left? We okay. can. I mean, don't Gary know. could have some money in his budget based on this transit service coordinator position that has not been hired yet. That's why we have to find it. It's not infrastructure, okay. would be my response. Okay. If this is not a capital. That is tied to the facilitation of the soft costs associated with anything construction, like an architect, it's professional services, right? It goes along. You can make that argument. Yeah, it goes along. So, well, it still goes to the point of locating the funding. The funding could be through the capital transportation fund. Okay. All right. It's we good. Got it could be the tooth fairy. All right. Yeah. 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 All right. We're fine. All right. I, I know where I will go with this. All right. So, not to see $50,000. So, we got the motion as is. Mm -hmm. Any more discussion? All in favor of recommending the collaborative firm not to exceed $50,000? No. Okay. Right. Well, follow up. So, and I'll make sure that that gets on the next work session agenda. All right, so that's going to be the 30th or the 29th as well as the decision. We need to get in and find the funding before that. Okay. Yeah. That's the 30th. And the we got the funding. We just have to finalize the funding. It's just like yeah, we'll find it here. Yeah, we'll take it from here. We got the funding. We got the funding. Yeah, yeah we have. Gary, you okay? Yes, sir. All right. 
But Gail, you understand what we're trying to do here? Absolutely. To keep it all going. I know mm -hmm. you had sort of money, but thank you for working through this. Anything else on the agenda, please? Yeah, the next item on the agenda is a, a lighting agreement related to the Highway 5, Dorset Shoals, Banks Mill, Pool Road, mm -hmm. Roundabout Project. Oh, boy. Uh, it's one roundabout, but it's the mm -hmm. confluence of all of those uh, roads. And so we, we've received um, the, the typical document from the uh, DOT that uh, I'm looking for uh, a recommendation from the committee to go ahead and move that and put it on the next uh, BOC agenda. Uh, these, uh, these agreements are commonplace in the sense that uh, GDOT has adopted a policy over the last several years that any lighting associated with a facility for which they contribute funds, either federal or state, they look at the local government to facilitate the lighting and the, on, well, the, not the construction of the lighting, but the ongoing maintenance costs uh, of the energy bill and any maintenance related to the facility. So, um, I make a motion we approve the lighting, we recommend the approval of the lighting agreement for the roundabout at Highway 5, Dorset Show, Banks Mill, Pool Road. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Mr. Mulcair, that's your issue or is that Ann? How's that fall? It's mine. It's your problem. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Next up, thank you very much. The next item on the agenda is a, a, a discussion related to the Chapel Hill thank you. Thank you. roadway thank you. project. Uh, we have, uh, as you know, have had discussions for the last several uh, months well, actually, when this project uh, started several years ago, at least in the concept stage, but we've gotten to the point where the design has progressed uh, to where they've provided us with a, uh, with a sketch of what the uh, alignment is going to look like. Yep. We also have discussion, I believe at the last committee meeting, related to uh, the possibility of advancing the sidewalk. Yep. Uh, well, um, I, I, th I, thought, no, that's not it. I thought I had uh, that sketch with me, and I do not. But in any event, uh, the issue ha that has come up related to, uh, to that is we initially talked about uh, having sidewalk on one side of the road and, and having a connection of that sidewalk to the, the sidewalk the segment that ends and, and uh, meets up with the high school, uh, with the school, I believe it's the high school. Mm -hmm. And so that puts it on the west side of, of mm -hmm. uh, the road. Mm -hmm. And uh, so as the design progressed, they, they came across uh, an option of perhaps adding uh, sidewalk, actually opting for the sidewalk to be on the east side because that's where the bulk of the subdivisions are and presumably that's where more pedestrians are going to be. Mm -hmm. The issue there is if you have sidewalk on both sides of the road, then you have to go to a different type of drainage design. Uh, more structural uh, increases the cost and not just the, the design components, but the right-of-way acquisition becomes uh, more extensive because uh, with the requirements for uh, water quality, the WSA uh, would require that we incorporate water quality treatments with the road project, which means that we may have to have designs for uh, swales along the road that are uh, act as purifiers or uh, regardless of pollution mm -hmm. and uh, there's no place to put those things other than acquiring additional right-of-way or uh, re removing uh, some of the uh, sidewalk that we would otherwise uh, incorporate. So the more sidewalk and more impervious area we add, the more the water quality components come into play, the more the costs go up and the more the right-of-way costs go up. We do not have, obviously, the, the numbers on the design yet because we are at the concept stage. And so we have to, uh, the reason I'm bringing this item to the committee at this point 
is uh, to get a sense from you and some guidance as to do we want to uh, expand, is, is it the consensus to expand the scope of the project to try to incorporate sidewalk on both sides or to leave it just one side uh, and if so, which side makes more sense? Obviously, the, side, the, the, uh, the high school is on the west side. So if, if you were to connect to it, either you, you put the sidewalk on that side or all along the winding section, or if you put it on the other side, you get it across the street. And if you do that on a road like uh, mm -hmm. Chapel Hill, you mm -hmm. need a hawk signal. Hawk signal uh, for a crossing is, is probably about seventy-five to $100,000. Mm -hmm. Not that that is a tremendous uh, escalation of, of, of the scope within itself, but it's an added cost that wouldn't be there necessarily if you have side windows. It would be cheaper. Would it not be cheaper to have a, what you call it the hawk, mm -hmm. a hawk, uh, and pay one side than pay both sides and not having a hawk? Yeah, because you're talking about swales and, you know, yeah. purification and be. all this other stuff, and to me it would make, it would make sense to, uh, to put the sidewalk on one side, put it on the population density side where Eagle's Nest is and Elk Run and all that, and then putting a crosswalk there at uh, somewhere adjacent to the the, uh, be the northeast corner of the high school property, where we generally all have a a, uh, a crossing guard or uh, a sheriff's deputy. Not always. I mean, you can't if they get called. You know, they're not going to be there. Uh, that would that would be my purpose. I mean, in terms of containing cost and putting the sidewalk on the side of the road where it needs to be, and forget about the west side. But no, let's, no. let's discuss it. You know. no, let's talk about this caretaker. I think this is again. I, I, I appreciate all his words um, that he'll be rendering. But go back to character areas and where there's parts of the county that prefers the less, um, you know, I guess, the impervious surface. They, they like look, we like dirt. We like grass. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, and it's okay. It, it, it's a character area. Where some are more denser, truck stops and all that stuff, so it, it has a different feel. Um, but I always wonder, and I had this question when I, you know, this when I first came on board, and uh, this is when y'all were building Fairview Road, I adhered to that. It was this whole notion of, like, where are the street lights on Lee Road? Where are the, where are the sidewalk? And it was, it was a conscious decision. It says, but we like crickets, we like it dark. It was also it was a cost function, which is we can save some cost by not doing it. And I saw it as a justification for like, but is that really what you want? Is it that you really prefer the nature, or is it that really it's about cost? But are you compromising for this? This this I like the nature, but I, I'm trying to balance this. I'm trying to make sure I hear the right thing. Like guys, you need sidewalks. There's a safety issue here. Uh, there's just a, you know, um, society evolves to a point where it needs to look, it doesn't have to go so far from one side to the other, but I'm, I'm trying to get the right balance. Well, I'm no, listening yeah. to you. Okay, what are yeah, you all let, saying? Let, let me weigh in uh, on that. Uh, it, it comes to judgment, and, and if you're talking about Fairman, Fairman Road and a four or five lane road with, with not a lot of direct connect, connectivity to them, very adjacent population centers, i.e. subdivisions, yeah. and people walking to places to shop, uh, not that either. Uh, in this area of Chapel Hill Road, you have, uh, I'll, I'll say three and a half subdivisions. Mm -hmm. you've, got, you've got Elk Run, Eagles, yeah. Eagles Nest, Sterling Point, and then you've got a, a non-subdivision residential road. So there's, there's three and a half subdivisions yeah. there. And they're all on the east side of the road. And I continually, continually see young people walking in the road, challenging vehicles, or if they got a little bit more sense, they're walking on the shoulder in the grass and, and staying out of the road to get to two education centers, high school and Holly Springs, yeah. uh, elementary school. So it's a question of balancing the character area with, with the issue of safety, especially safety for young people. Yeah. Uh, so there's a big difference between that in the, in the scenario of, of Fairman Road, or, or at least large, 
large parts of it, not entirely, but yeah, large, large, large parts of it. So, you know, that's that's my kind of my rendering. So you would support you are supporting this notion. So then the question is, do we do it on both sides to be consistent? I mean, why wouldn't you do both sides? This is just one side. Like the cost is the cost of it. If that's the quality of life and that's what we want is the option to whether it shouldn't matter, I'm I'm safely walking down on both sides. Why is there a trade-off in the proposition? Like, why wouldn't you do both? And I'm just asking. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and, and, and the issue is, it's actually several factors, but one is that because you're adding several, well, let's say 1,500 feet of sidewalk, yes. that level of impervious area has to be treated. And so then you need, uh, not only the, the you're incurring the cost of the sidewalk, but then you need an area to create uh, uh, wet soils yeah, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. and so then from there you have to discharge that water mm -hmm. into so now you're getting into buying right of way in front of those residences to accommodate these additional things now that's one component the other component is that long term there is a uh, concept for widening that road mm -hmm. to four lanes so the more improvements that you do now as a three lane configuration, the more that you would have to be redoing it's at, a, at a later, at a later. Discarding, basically. Right. Yeah. So back to the notion of master planning. Back to, you know, the, you know, the three acre minimums or whatever. It, it's just sort of the master planning, which I, but if this is, if that's our future state, then shouldn't we line up where that character area should be going in the future? Not that it has to be today. We're not making it a value proposition. It's more of a, well, if that's where we're going to go, could you come back later and do one side versus the other? I, I'm just asking. I just like, mm -hmm. wow, you, are you, we? You, you could. Mm -hmm. You could. Okay. So. You could even shift your, when you're talking about the four lane, you could even, you could look at it now, you could offset to the other side. Yeah, you could do that. And, and, cost. and one of the things that we could do uh, as part of this project is to have more of a gap between the existing curb and where the sidewalk is laid. Mm -hmm. So that in the future, if we do some nominal widening as well on mm -hmm. that side, mm -hmm. not necessarily fully symmetrical, but uh, capturing some of that real estate that we would not impact the, the sidewalk itself. Now, right now, because of the returns from the exits of the subdivisions, we would have to kind of line that up with what's there. Yeah. But that doesn't uh, preclude us from having the sidewalk offset further back within the existing plan. All right. So then, all right, I won't belabor it. I, I that was just a discussion for my own benefit. Commissioner Walker, I'm going to yield to, to like, so what do y'all want to do? What do you, what's your action item? Well, what I what I need is a the, the recommendation from the committee to uh, again the two components one sidewalk on both sides or just one and then if one which side please call mm -hmm. uh, you're and I'm I'm envisioning the properties there uh, and it makes it makes sense in terms of just space uh, for the sidewalks to be on the website because there's some, there's a, a business there you've got subdivision uh, entrances and I don't know how much they would be involved uh, and then you've got homes houses that are real close to the road just right now you're talking about the east side yeah 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 the east side so if you would just look at it say where you're going to put a sidewalk I said we'll put it on we'll put it on the west side that's what makes sense but if you do that, yeah. then when when you do the widening, you're, you're boxed in on, you're on the west side and now mm -hmm. you're having to push it to the east side. Whereas if you put it on the east side where the subdivisions are now mm -hmm. and, you, and you get it closer to the existing edge of the right-of-way, then you right. could in the future expand sidewalk to the west side as well when you do the four lanes. Well, for the lanes, right. And right. So I'll go back to my original right. thought was that the sidewalk, because of the, all of the subdivisions that are along the east side, the sidewalk needs to be on the east side. Mm 
Like with, 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 with the crossing. Okay. Now, do we need that? I mean, there's a lot of traffic on that road, and there's a lot of kids. And then we would need that hawk signal, that, that crossing signal. And you need, I think you could, you'd almost need something, maybe something. What, what is a hawk? Tell us what that is. Uh, is it a, tra a, a pedestrian signal? It's a pedestrian signal that uh, that actually flashes red. Uh, when, you know, it's a push button. When somebody's, when somebody's wanting to cross, mm -hmm. and it'll flash yellow and then flash red, and traffic actually has to stop mm -hmm. when it's red to allow somebody to cross. Well, I would say that, that would be my preference at a minimum. Uh, and it's not to say that maybe you do some, uh, I don't know, uh, I don't like rumble strips, but uh, some some way to slow down traffic. But other than that, I don't know if that would be tire spikes or... <laughs> <laughs> well, frankly, when you're, when you're talking about concentrating, once you build the sidewalk and you're concentrating pedestrian flow mm -hmm. to a uh, uh, school, near a school, mm -hmm. the recommendation is to have some sort of pedestrian overhead uh, no. indicator. So, okay. yeah. those, those kind of go ahead. That would, that, would be my, that would be my preference. And then looking to the future, I think that's also the best, the best option as well. Mm -hmm. Just putting the sidewalk on the east side. Because I, I, I envision that is where most of the land is going to be acquired uh, for eventual road widening. Which mm -hmm. I don't think I'll be around, but uh, we still have to think of the future. Yep. And so, do I hear a recommendation to apply the sidewalks on the east side with the condition of a hawk signal? That is my rec that is my motion. Second. <laughs> All in favor, make that recommendation. Any names? Gary. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Yes, Let's keep pushing, guys. Okay. Next item on the agenda is Riverside Rockhouse Road traffic signal. Um, what we have uh, realized uh, after the signal was installed is that we we probably would enhance the safety at that location by adding another display, uh, just another signal head, so that uh, as traffic is coming down Riverside around the bend, they can they can spot that particular signal. Correct, like right. offset coming, mm -hmm. offset, offset to the side. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, we've we've received a, a uh, proposal from the contractor, uh, around twenty five hundred dollars to do that installation. So yeah, that traffic load coming around that corner, it's fast, it's heavy. Mm -hmm. Out here. So this would uh, this would certainly help. And there's a change order. There would be a change order to that contract. Okay. The mark we can end that right is just more of the maintenance or how we cover that is that um, spots? It'd be spots. It would come to a change order on this project if they're still they're already in the contractor on this project. Mm -hmm. Would you support that? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. It's a safety issue. Yeah, it's safety issues. Yeah. Yeah. And the twenty five hundred dollars is yeah, that's not yeah, that's mm -hmm. not so we're making a recommendation to move forward with the offset signal for Rock House and Riverside. Mm -hmm. They told me calls twenty five hundred dollars to be taken out of the SPLOS as a funding source. Mm -hmm. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay. The next item on the agenda is a, uh, uh, and this is informational at this time. You just yep. So so you uh, be aware that it's coming up. Yep. This this particular handout will. Uh, kind of give you a sense of the area that we're talking about. One of the things that's happened uh, in that area is that there's been development, uh, industrial development, mm -hmm. that uh, has uh, gone on over the last few years and more recently several sites have been uh, approved for, for industrial development. And what we have found is that both Douglas Hill, the entirety of Douglas Hill Road on the west side of uh, Thornton, yep. and um, the same for factory shoals uh, are no truck uh, are, are now deemed to be no truck traffic uh, roads. Yep. And so, if as we were approving industrial uh, development there, obviously that's going to draw truck traffic. We're having to accommodate it, and so we're going to have to come before the board, and there's going to be a requirement for a public hearing on this. Um, just the nature of how the ordinance is set up to reconfigure that. And so this sketch will give you a sense for 
uh, we're going to be looking to, to remove the restriction on Douglas Hill so that uh, uh, it now can be accessed by trucks um, all the way up to the last development that's been approved. And the segment of factory shows from Thornton Road to Douglas Hill as well will have to take the restriction off there. So we can do it by if there's an overlay, there's not something, some condition, there's no zoning. We don't care about right? We don't have a public here. It's a change. It's better yeah. than the yeah. 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 so yeah. yeah. Each each individual location is an ordinance. Mm -hmm. okay. Delineated. So we can switch, but we can change it just for this. So it's not temporal, it'll be permanent for this area, right? This is it's a not, not we'll have a couple more items yeah. on there that will be. Exactly. And, and there's there's other this is one one graphic of uh, an area that we've been focused on but, but there's a north baggett road that's been brought up as a as another road where we ought to do the same thing too and there's a petition on that one uh, citizen petition came citizen petition yes sir mm -hmm. citizen petition that was given to commissioner gather okay. yeah. mm -hmm. um and and there could potentially be others but but um with with the consensus of, of, of the committee, yep. I will move this item uh, to a future agenda, and so it will pop up. I have one more to add. If the committee sees fit, Commissioner Mitchell wants Beachwood added to that, and I don't remember. I think it's Lane, but I'm not positive to allow trucks to to not allow trucks. Okay, so well, since instead of going <coughs> from. Uh, Instead of going all the way to Skyview and taking a right from Mount Vernon, they're taking a right on Beachwood immediately Ooh. before you get to Skyview. Well, they're cutting through. They're cutting through. Subdivision. Yeah, subdivision. That's 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 coming off of all that. Okay. Turn, and turn it road. And it could be GPS that's telling them that, but they should go to Skyview. Yeah, the pass is wrong again. Okay, I got it. They would actually be just as quick or yeah. quicker to go to Skyview. Yeah. Well, sure, I have no problem adding that to this. I, I, no, I, I have no problem either. But just, you know, we talked about Skyview at Mount Vernon. Boy, that's a heck of a turn right there. Just uh, wall it out. And yeah. Narrow. Yeah. That's what a old colonial that needs another lane or something. So that, that is something that we will look at as part of that comprehensive plan update. Yeah. Uh, we'll take a look at that because that is a. Something that needs so no action. We want to just no action. It's just for, for information yeah, at yeah. this time. But but uh, I wanted to bring it to the committee now because when I when I package everything and get the information of all the roads we want to do, I will bring the package for all Excellent. the roads together and go straight to the board. So you'll see it mm -hmm. as an agenda. I so some of will be no trucks and some will and be, some will be trucks. trucks. Yeah, yeah, that's why I started. I heard two different things. Correct. Yeah, that's why. Right. Nothing else. else. And. and uh, no, the next item is actually related to that it, it, on the same graphic where you see the intersection of uh, Douglas Hill and Factory Shoals. That is an intersection that we're having to reconfigure uh, as a result partially of uh, the development, industrial development, uh, the Rockefeller uh, group yeah. that's developing yeah. on the southwest side of that intersection. And uh, the it is north of that. I'm sorry, DCT is north of that, yeah. uh, would be uh, on the right all the way at the end of Double Sail. Yes. Yeah. Well, DC DCT has two sites. They have one on factory shelves and one on Double Sail. So, uh, so we're going to have to reconfigure that. And uh, to that end, there is an, another item that I want to have a discussion with the committee, but uh, it would have to be an executive session. Um, so I'll just leave it at that at this point that we're. We're looking at reconfiguring that intersection uh, and going to a different type of control, either a four-way stop or some other configuration. Uh, but I do have an item uh, that if, uh, if we could uh, handle today in executive session uh, before the committee meeting is over, that, that would be good. We'll use the same graphic to have that discussion. Is there anything yeah. else formal in the open record component of this meeting that we need to cover? Um, I don't. I don't think so because the the uh, the item would be uh, property acquisition related to this reconfiguration. The reconfigure the, the this item uh, item nine is listed as part of this agenda, so we're covered from that perspective. 
and uh, then the other item be uh, potential right of way acquisition, uh, we would need to do, we, we certainly would want to discuss that in the mm -hmm. So there's nothing else that needs to be discussed before we move into an executive session. Exactly. Well, no, there's so items on the agenda still before right. we get to that. Yeah. 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 Okay. So can we finish those out? Yes. Sure. Sure. Yes. Okay. So item 10, um, that is an, a, a proposed agreement um, with Holden County to split the cost. Uh, that is the intersection improvement. We've been going back and forth <laughs> designing. We, in fact, we just got the. Uh, the redesign of the signal system uh, that was conveyed to uh, uh, to Polden County, and so they are uh, wrapping up, finishing the, the plans. This agreement essentially will say there's going to be uh, a 50-50 split for all components of that. Um, for the entire construction. For the entire construction. Right away, everything. With the exception of right of way, right of way, because we were able to minimize, we only we eliminated, uh, I believe, five, uh, three out of five parcels, we're down to two. Very minimal uh, easement. It's not even a right of way. Okay. So we have um, it, it is so minor that we've talked about. One is in Colden County. One is in Douglas. So they're going to handle theirs. We're going to handle ours. Nominal costs for that. So this is going to be strictly construction, and this agreement, again, uh, would be an agenda item to, to split the cost. Now, the estimate right now is about a million bucks. Wow. It is a plus project. It is a plus project. Is it on the list? Yeah, yeah it's, it's on the list. It's on the list. It's swaps funded. Mm -hmm. And it's, we're going in order, so. Yeah. So we're covered on this one. I don't remember exactly where it is on the list. I don't remember exactly where, but it's third or fourth. Yeah, it's, it's, it's up there. It it's was a 2017. Line. Certainly, above it was a year one project. Yeah. Is that important? On the list. I don't know you say it's probably. I mean, we're filling out the list, but you know, okay, no problem. I'm, I'm just asking. That's a half million dollars. Like, okay. That's just putting the cost. All right, so what are you asking here? Well, at this point, uh, make a recommendation, a recommendation to, for, to move to the board with the, uh, for the IGA. With the IGA. Okay. I just want to make sure with the condition that we got confirmation that y'all going to show us the list that is on the list. Have y'all ever seen, Mike, have you seen the list lately? Not lately. Okay. There's no telling who's been pranking with that thing. I haven't touched it. Okay. See, okay. See, from what y'all approved, the <laughs> change. We got a man over there who's got the list. There's no changes. Yeah. See, but just send it to us on the record. So okay. the full call the whole board. I mean, the hand in the middle, send it to all of us. Okay, can we get a recommendation? I make, yeah, I make a motion to present a recommendation of the full board of commissioners that Baker's Bridge Road, Sweetwater Creek Road intersection improvements project uh, cost be shared 50 50 with Paulding County. I guess According to the IGA. Yeah. Effective. Any okay. more discussion? All in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Send that to legal and let them look at it when you have it. Already have it. Okay. Right. okay. We'll keep going, Gail. Okay. The next item is a, a request, and I do have a handout uh, on that, for additional funding for uh, transportation items. And I'll go through. Um, some discussion about uh, the urgency of some of these items, but one of one of the uh, things that we have discussed over the last several uh, months is uh, actually probably more like nine months now. Uh, the fact that there was some money that was earmarked for a bridge project that that uh, we we're not going to have to incur, and that that funding would need to be reallocated uh, somewhere. I'm suggesting that we reallocate at least a million dollars uh, off of that to uh, capital items for uh, equipment. Uh, if you look at the list that I've provided, it pretty much adds to, to a million. All of these items are BIRs with, uh, that have been requested in the budget for this year. However, it is highly unlikely that they will be all approved items, uh, particularly the items two and three, both of those mowing tractors are now out of service. 
We um, are hopeful that we'll get them back within the next week or so. The expenditure level, because of their age and condition, I believe we're into close to between six and seven thousand dollars each one within the last month. So these are purchased them in net. They're 22 years old. And that, is that all? So so these it. these are. Yeah, I'm not I'm not really sure. Well, I think it's 22. I don't have the, the history on that. But Gary said Gary Jenkins said. Yeah. Okay, good. good. So the, yeah, so so these are items that that as much as we are now incurring the expenditure for the repairs because we got to keep going through mowing season, we cannot get them through another season the, the way they are. And what we're suggesting, what I'm suggesting is that there be a more comprehensive approach to replacement of the equipment that is needed for the maintenance of the roads, be it uh, mowing uh, in the wintertime, salt and sand, uh, spreading, and, and uh, items like that. I'm also proposing, as you might see, uh, items uh, five and six, to have salt barns uh, installed at different locations, one at, at the Public Works location on Chicago Avenue now, and another one at another remote location to be identified. We have done some uh, pretty extensive <coughs> research in terms of what uh, the other counties in the area use and what the DOT uses, and so that we're proposing something very similar to what uh, uh, GDOT has there off of I-20 near uh, this side of, uh, of uh, Thornton Road. So, so all of those items. So, so what we're, what we would, uh, what I'm asking is that these items that that are needed long term and some very urgently, some right now, some right now, be considered. I mean, if if the rec I would want a recommendation to add, uh, once we get that list, to, to add this item as a as a additional funding allocation for equipment. As you might recall, there was an allocation on year one and year two for equipment, but not in year three, four, or five, six. Um, so what I'm suggesting, what I'm um, asking for is that that you include these items on the recommendation to allocate the funding that was saved from the bridge to this uh, endeavor. Which included three sidewalk projects, which we have under design right now, correct? And included the bridge. Total for that category, we had $8 million. The bridge was, we say, $3.2 million. Mm -hmm for the DOT taking that project up. Mm. Right, all right, so let me be sure. I heard a couple of options for it. additional allocation of the million dollars. That means that we didn't account for this initially. Right. I'm just listening. And so, and I'm hearing that we're trying to restructure what we, we sort of have implied committed to. I heard something about BIRs. Right. There's a list of BIRs. But was it the approved BR list that the board approved in the budget, or is it just on the BR list? On the request list for next year. Okay, for the next year. So we, so again, you're asking for a million dollars that's on the list for next year that we haven't gone through this cycle because we haven't got to yet. Mm -hmm. You're asking us to do this now? Yes, sir. Because? Because of the urgency of some of the items and because uh, these items have been BIRs, many of them, several iterations. Why can't we just wait to the budget cycle? I mean, what am I missing? Why, why I mean, now? Based on if we're anywhere similar to what we had last year, there's not a million dollars. It's not there. Going to the SPLOST list and the equipment allocations embedded in the SPLOST list, uh, in prioritization, you know, uh, form. Uh, where does the next equipment allocation come out? And there is none for Douglas County DOT. Uh, so that was a first year and a second year. It was a first year and a second year. Mm -hmm. Six and four. 
that correct? 64, that's correct. So 10,000, okay. year one. Okay. 400,000, year two. Uh, I'm sensitive to the urgency of the tractors. Uh, but didn't we buy you? I mean, y'all just ain't telling them right. Didn't we? I mean, I'm hearing, I'm mixing some things in here. Again, you know, I'm pretty sensitive to the loaning contract and all of that through last year. So, and taking it in house versus it out, you know, So I'm like, <coughs> what are we saying here? Like, why do we have to move? What is their urgency? Is there a public safety? If there's some type of contract obligations, what is it that says that, okay, we can't do it, especially knowing since the season will be over here pretty soon anyway. What are we saying that we can't just wait on this until the BR process comes up? Why the shotgun? I haven't heard that yet. Why the urgency? Okay, we delayed. We knew that we were going to be, we can anticipate we're going to be delayed, but we're delayed. Why are we, why are we trying to, I don't get it. A couple of things. One is, more recently, we've had, and let me back up a little bit. With the mowing effort, there are really two efforts. There is the contracted effort, and then there is the ongoing in-house and et cetera. This would go to the ongoing in-house effort. The equipment that they use is uh, not up to par. It's old and, and it's breaking down. We are, as I indicated, we're spending a disproportionate amount for repair. My concern is that it may not last till the end of the milling season, and if it doesn't, the next breakdown may be a way, do we even throw any more money into this after right. this experiment? All right, I, I think that. All right, so we're going to come back to again one more time about our capacity to do stuff that it's really not our core function. I'm going to go back to resurfacing, I'm going to go back to mowing. That's so why you have these third party contractors, like that's what they do. When we sit here and we try to in-house in certain functions that we really are not sort of committed to, those are just supposed to be one-offs, like staff augmentation. It flex up and flex down. We can get in there, we do it. We're really not committed to it like a, a true core function, researching or mowing. And again, I'm sitting here like, guys, we're, we're, we're playing with this. Like, well, we're sort of in the game, we're not in the game. Well, we can do it ourselves. It's like, I get that we aspire to do it ourselves and it, it has to imply its savings, but it's not. Why don't we just outsource everything? So I'm back to, that's why I'm like, I. I can't help on this one. I, I don't see why I should move before, because I, 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 I can't see this one. All right, let, let me offer one yeah, other please, help piece of information. Recently, other counties, in fact, Cobb in particular, has gone through this same iteration and decided to totally bring their mowing operation in-house because of their experience. Yeah. They I, had it. We one, talked to boys, I was saying. Okay. We, so we, so they took their entire outlay and they said, this is not working to our satisfaction, we're going to go this route. Right. Well, I think... They were all okay, I understand, I know their system, yes. Where we're headed, you know, I think last year we had a mowing contract with four cycles. That will, yeah, 60 yeah. And, and 70. In 18, we have a mowing contract with three cycles because we're doing more stuff in-house. It could be that the decision, and this is a board decision, in 2019, uh, you look at perhaps investing more on the in-house component. And what I'm suggesting is that even if we didn't change the equation, even if we just move forward with what we're doing now, we need two tractors to keep going. I think we went through a lot with this video. Yeah, this is right we get kind of all with this, you know, do we go to four district? I mean, it's like, I'm, and again, you're, you're making sense of this. And it's just one of those like, well, maybe this world. I, I can't support putting a million dollars behind this. No, I, where I was going before go ahead. Is, is, is that I would, I would be in favor of addressing the immediate needs, uh, but, you know, Brian systems and barns and, and, and that sort of thing. Uh, I think it needs to go through the, the BIR process. Now, I understand the age of the mowers. I, I do think mowing is 
if you want it to be, it's certainly a core uh, competency, core responsibility of, of the county versus outsourcing. You can go either way. Mm -hmm. uh, the issue is, a, is the equal there being with the balance. Uh, it's, it is kind of peculiar to be kind of half and half maybe. But, right. but the immediate need, what I'm hearing and what I trust in, is the need for replacing these, these tractors. Uh, I don't know about the dump truck. Uh, I don't know about the mini track excavator or the pickup truck, but I'm hearing immediate need for the for the mowing. Elaborate a little bit on the on the uh, boom mower. The, the boom mower, instead of a rear attachment, has a side attachment that reaches mm -hmm. up and it does line of sight clearance. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. It looks like grenades going up. Well, sometimes. <laughs> Unfortunately, it does that too. Artillery. But it, but it also, it, in some situations, it can reach on the other side of a ditch where you wouldn't want to put the equipment there, but, but with the arm you do that. So it's a specialized piece of equipment. Right. So you need you need the ones to pull uh, the, the mowers, the foil mowers behind it. Um, and then you need this boom on I, I you know, I can uh, I can support the uh, the, uh, the what's the, what's the condition of our present boom mower? Can you, we get a few more years out of it? Uh, well, or is, we, it, or is it the same kind of? It's service? the same kind of thing. We we spent uh, quite a bit of money repairing it uh, mm -hmm. a couple months ago. Okay, I, I could support I one, two, and three. I, I would prefer to see the other items go through the BIR process. Uh, my concern is that uh, um, the uh, The equilibrium between you know outsourcing and insourcing. Are we, are we going to eventually uh, equip ourselves, you know, to do all this work and not use an outside contractor? That's a that's a strategic decision. And to your point that you made earlier, and, and uh, Commissioner Robinson and I had we've had this discussion repeatedly is about putting uh, replacement uh, putting replacement cycle on these mowers so we're not even get, get in the situation. It, you know, is it lease purchase or, or or just leasing or whatever? To get away from these, you know, six, eight, and ten, twelve thousand dollar repair bills, uh, you know, every other year on a piece of equipment. Let's get let's get rid of it. Let's sell it. Let's auction it or whatever. That's enough. That's another discussion. Uh, I can support uh, items one, two, and three with, with the medians, immediacy. That's kind of the way I feel. Okay. And the rest go to the BIR. All right. So let me let me just make sure. So BIR process we went through last year was these three things that you just mentioned on that list and it just didn't make the cut. Yep. Right, so it didn't make the cut. So again, it was a company that we created committed to. Like, yeah, we're gonna do it again back to the political office. Oh we're out there cutting grass. Oh yeah, we, so we we gave it the lip service, the political optics. But yet we didn't have the competence to cut more capacity to fulfill that commitment. So that's what I'm sitting here like a women. I thought we acquiesced and we were going to do that. We're going to give you a shot to do it internally. Then we don't even have the equipment to support that type of increased capacity. That's like, come on, guys. That's all I'm saying. So we got to line this up. It just, it, it, it's unaligned. Um, we, we had expressed our intentions to do it. But I'm like, well, what have you been doing all year? Well, what, what's been happening? Now, I haven't followed up and I haven't heard complaints. So I guess people move on with their complaints. So how are we doing, Mark? Are we, are we saying that we're not doing anything in house? Are we no, just we've been doing we've been doing work in the house. We still have a contractor this year. I understand. So he's doing that part. He's doing his part. Mm -hmm. doing our, we've been doing our part with our tractors and helping helping out in between right before holidays on some of these major thoroughfares where we were getting yeah. the most complaint. We would send yeah. our guys out there to help them out. Um, we do we did buy some specialized lawn mowers. Yep. And right. we've had trouble hiring employees. Um, well, what time? So, so we're trying to personally, hire we don't have, we're not there. So I'm back to, you got employees, your equipment's all. Why don't we take some clean money and put that behind us right now? That they can't wait to the end of the year? Again, I'm listening to the lives. I'm like, I don't support that. You, you don't even have people to run the equipment. Well, we have operators right. for the tractors. Yeah, we do have. Mm -hmm. we, we don't have tractors. Yeah, but now we don't have trackers. Mm -hmm. Dependable. Dependable trackers. Yeah, dependable trackers. We have trackers. Well, at, at this moment, we don't. They're in the yeah, shop. Yeah, you're right. They're, They're in the shop. About 7,000 worth of repairs. 
for the second time in, in a few weeks. But, but the, the point about that is, you know, either, either we, uh, certainly we can defer, and, and this is a board decision. Uh, I'm just bringing it to your attention mm -hmm. because the last time we took it through the process, it, it didn't rise to, to the level of urgency that we have now. And what I'm saying now is, look, I'm not even sure they'll go to the end of the year through your budget cycle. And so you might consider advancing this as, as part of this broader uh, look at equipment needs. Uh, but but you get, it ain't like no work is being done because you've got a third party operator out there. Right? Yeah, they're you doing other roads. Not the, I, we don't do the same work. I understand that. But there's work being done, right? right. It, it, it's, it, it's not like nothing's not being done. Uh, I'm just not convinced enough on this to take it out immediately, right, guys. So I don't want to belabor the, uh, the hour on this, uh, but it, I, I don't hear the light urgency on this. I, I just, it, it, let's just put a, a note on it right now. Let's just put a pin, like we had, we deferred it uh, one of the items to later on in the conversation. Let's just keep going. I, I wanted to make sure I get to the exact session. We're going to be, we're going to run out of time here pretty soon because we got to go to session. So let's, Table this topic right here for me now. Let's just we're just tabling it for now to a determined time. We can pick it back up. Let's make sure we get to your entire agenda, including executive session, and we can come back. How about okay, that? Very good. Thank you. Okay, the next item on the agenda it, this would be administrative concurrence for negotiations with the selected fir uh, firms for the design of uh, the uh, Chapel Hill Road I 20 uh, interchange DDI. Um, yeah, the diamond interchange, diamond interchange scoping mm -hmm. study, and then the Lee Road extension scoping study. Both of those have gone through the process. We've gotten uh, the RFQs in, uh, yep. the committee has analyzed. We've selected a target um, a consultant, and this would be moving on to the, to the negotiations for a fee to do the design, which then we would bring back uh, before the board as a recommendation for a contract. Two separate contracts or one contract? Two separate contracts. Two separate contracts, two one separate consultants, each. one for each of those roles. Correct. Um, two different scopes of work, but they're both designed. Correct. So we're beyond the, the study, the money that we gave Chris Pumpkin to go study the Lee Road. Okay, that's a separate. Is, that's totally separate. Different. All right. Totally I'm totally just different. That's your planning and zoning. That's land planning. Uh -huh. Correct. This is actually for the scoping for the road alignment. I got you. I'm just. Okay. I got. I'm fine. I uh, I make a recommendation for administrative concurrence for item twelve. Do we have a second? Second. Right. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any nays? Motion passes. All right. Keep going. All right. That's the last item uh, 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 right. on the agenda before. Uh, the executive session item, if that is the motion of board. I'll uh, make a motion we're going to the executive session. Second. 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 Uh, I'll make a motion to go out of the executive session. Second. All right, we got a motion to second. Um, all in favor coming out of the executive session for Transportation Committee meeting. Aye. 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 All opposed. All right, now we're back into the regular session of the Tuesday, October 21st, 2018 um, Transportation Committee. Is there anything else needs to come before this committee? Well, uh, uh, Commissioner, the one item that uh, we sort of held in abeyance was the discussion about uh, the allocation for uh, so, some consideration for allocation of uh, SPLOS funding for some of the items, uh, uh, particularly the, the mowing uh, tractors, uh, in, in the request uh, to replace our existing tractors that are uh, broken down. But it's part of the BIR process. So picking it back up is part of the BIR process. We think we'll get there. Is work being done? Uh, we're, we're, is there urgency? And again, urgent versus important. It's like, okay, well, how about this? How about this? With these tractors, it's urgent. Didn't we know this? How about this? I, I, I'd like to have a full conversation with the full board of commissioners. I, I'm not, um, I'll, I'll withhold my support of this because I really, I don't want to stop it. So if the committee wants to move forward, I'll, I'll, I'll not stop it as chair. 
but I don't support the allocation of this light as is. I just don't. I just think that we shouldn't be here. And I, I thought we were more thoughtful about just doing it internally versus externally. And it's just like, wait a minute, what? what? And it just didn't seem like there was a real plan. It's like we're reacting to providing services. When we went through so much last year about, that's when I'm like, no. So I, I can't support a recommendation, but I'm willing to let it come before the full board of commissioners. But mm -mm, I, I just think that's, that we, we haven't justified our, our operational excuse hasn't justified, like, why should I get behind these guys after everything we went through last year regarding these contracts and, and, and outsourcing versus internal? It's like, I, I just, I'm, I, don't, I don't have the confidence at this point. It's like, well, at least I don't see why, like, okay, y'all doing such a good job, you need to broke down, okay, now I'll get, I'll, I'll get behind you. But it's like, we, we ain't even deliver, well, I, we're good, commissioner. So. You mentioned a little while ago that you hadn't heard too many complaints this year, and part of the reason is because they are doing such a good job, but they wore out the equipment. So uh, my, my concern is perhaps uh, you may have a point. You know, we, we, we have equipment. Uh, we hope to get it back within a week or so, and then we might be able to get through the end of, of the year. But I don't have a comfort level that that's going to be the case. I don't know that we'll get it back and we'll break down in another week or two. This is the point is that if we were really committed to internalizing this, then that should have not, not made the list. That's my point. In other words, you should have assessed your equipment. You should have known the wear and tear. Commissioner Mulcahy, there's always should be a performance and a cycle and so and one more time. So it's like, okay, i got to react. I, I thought I had this planned out. That y'all knew what it would take. Like, okay, you got a 67 slant seven slant six valiant Plymouth. <laughs> I had that on my first car, right? Not that you know, it was small. Like, so, or, or, or do you got like a 2013? And so there was some evaluation that I was hoping that, and again, so you're asking, like, guys, I mean, if you were committed to it, that means you need to have personnel and you need to have the tools for them to do their job and they need to be adequate for the, the, the expectation and the performance that was coming. So now it's like, wait a minute, you know, why don't you just ask for what you got? And so if you say, well, we need to make a decision, we can't do this right now, let's push this off. Okay, so that means that it, it ain't that important because you pushed yeah. off the equipment that delivered against it. We didn't make the request. They no. didn't make the request. But they didn't make the list. Well, well they didn't make the list because the money wasn't available, but even if the money had been available, the board decided to take everything off the list Okay. Clean sweep. Right. So there was no discernment. There's no discernment. What was urgent, what could potentially be urgent, or what was not urgent, or what was not needed at all. There was no discernment. And we just wiped this, we kind of wiped the slate clean. All right. So here's the question. If you look at personal records and all the other community stuff, and there's usually some type of savings, now I know they were back feeling like, okay, let's go ahead and spend excess savings. So let's go ahead and slip some equipment in here that wasn't there. How are we doing this? Let me just get right to it. Because I'm like, I hear y'all. They're like, okay, where is this extra, this additional money coming from that we got? Where is this money? Where, where is this money coming from? The two and a half million dollars that was included in the sidewalk and intersection upgrade category, which totaled eight million dollars from the savings from the post road bridge. So then we get into the discussion. Okay, do we use the savings? Or do we hold them in advance? If we hold them in abeyance, how long do we hold them in abeyance? If we don't hold them in abeyance, what is a, appropriate expenditure? And in my opinion, it's the three items that uh, are discerned as uh, that an urgent, urgent, is is an urgent need. What is the three items? 78? 200. 100. I thought 242. 282. $34 million. Dollar. So that's where it comes down. It comes down to discernment. I, I have to trust the department here. I don't agree with all the other items. That's what I'm saying. It just feels like, where is this all coming from? And I get there. We're rationalizing in action. I get it. Now we got money. I get them always sensitive. Oh, God, we got money now. Let's go ahead and get this stuff in here. I just want to make sure we were thoughtful about it to begin with. I, I get the freeze. And it's not, a, I mean, again, you're getting your mind around this. Um, I, I tell you what, so I will. Um, alter my, my thoughts. It says, I, I, like I said, I wouldn't support the million dollars. We want to go get beyond that. But I'm willing to acquiesce on the, what, one, two, and three? Yes, sir. To take it to the full board of commissioners and still have that conversation at that level. 
How about that? Okay. Yeah, fair time. Okay. okay. So can I get a motion to make recommendations for one, two, and three okay. as it's a recommendation to pull board commissions? Yeah, I'll make a motion to uh, pull the items one, two, and three for uh, uh, review by the full board of commissioners at, at the estimated cost of, uh, we said, $282,000. Take it second. All in favor? Any votes? All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anything else need to come before this board of commissioners? Sure. How about lunch? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Not bad. I should be guys in my Kit Kat, but I just uh, had, I saw you over there. I was like, I'm dying over here. <laughs> That's what happened. Oh yeah, I got Kit Kats. All right. Um, this meeting, um, 2001 of August, um, is August 21st, 2018 meeting of the Transportation Committee is adjourned. Go so, on.